Do not take product if you are hypersensitive. internet and welcome back to the intoxicated podcast for any new listeners this is a podcast where i have my friends on we have a couple drinks and we talk about life intoxicated is essentially my version of being kelly ripa which was my dream for a long time guys i'm gonna be really real about this i feel like absolute crap uh yesterday i was out walking around the city and i just got hit with like this sore throat and like aches and pains and probably a fever i just i just got hit with a wall of sickness last night and i have been miserable ever since oh my god so if i sound low energy in this intro that is why um i'm gonna keep it really quick because my voice is definitely gonna fail me at some point. I can just feel it coming. But despite being sick, I'm really, really stoked because I just came off a week of awesome recording with a bunch of people. All I'll say is that I cannot wait for you guys to hear some episodes that are gonna be coming out really soon. But for this week, I wanted to do an episode in honor of Father's Day. Father's Day was this past Sunday, so it's still a little relevant, right? So because we did a Mother's Day episode with Melanie and Sandra, it was only natural for me to get the dads together to do a podcast for Father's Day. So this week I have my friends Jesse and Ben on the podcast. Both have been on before on couples episodes, and Jesse's done a, a bunch of other ones as well. These guys are part of the awesome YouTube Let's Play channel, TQ, so we did get to record in the TQ studios, the TQ Videos, which was awesome. We also recorded this on a Saturday morning at like 10 30 in the morning is when I got over to Jesse's. So it was really, really early, but it is intoxicated. So we still did drink. We actually drank some whiskey and coffee and hung out and talked about fatherhood. It was a great episode. We actually cover a lot. So Jesse and Ben definitely go over their sort of dad tips from their perspectives. Uh, one big theme of this episode is the fact that you just got to do what's best for you and your partner and your family and maybe not listen to advice, but they have a lot of insight into fatherhood. They are both new dads. They're also both very hardworking and dedicated to their family. And so they are the perfect guests to have on for this dad cast. So we talk about the challenges of fatherhood, the good sides of it, and also how to manage your social life and manage your time when you're a dad, because that obviously gets very hard when you have a child. So Jesse and Ben really have a lot of insight into that. And it was really, really interesting to hear them talk open and honestly about it and also have me there as a friend of new parents saying my perspective so it was really good conversation I had a lot of fun Jesse and Ben are awesome definitely check out TQ uh, if you are into video games I will link to their channel below all I have to say is holy holy crap Patreon. We are now up to six Patreons on our Intoxicated Patreon page. Ding, ding, ding. Big ding for all of our new and existing Patreons. So we do have some new Patreons to mention. We have Heather and Shannon, uh, both really good friends of mine who have done the show before. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. Uh, And you do it anyways by just being my friends and being awesome guests. But becoming a Patreon just takes it to the next level. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And we also have Ver. Vernon. Now, Vernon is a new friend of mine, but let me tell you, it's a friendship that's probably going to last a long time because I have no idea how I got through life without this person around. Uh, I actually recorded with Vernon and Aaron, two new friends that I essentially met randomly through Sandra, but we totally hit it off and we had an amazing night of recording. That episode should be coming out next week unless we do do a Canada Day episode, which may or may not happen, but very, very soon nonetheless, you are going to hear Vernon and Aaron. They are amazing people. I feel like it was really serendipitous that we met and uh, Vernon is a fan of the show. He gives me a lot of feedback about it. Thank you so much for being a Patreon. I cannot wait to chat more with you about uh, the show and, and they'll probably be back on again because it was unreal. You'll just have to wait for that one. <laughs> and of course, we have Scott, we have Tyler, and we have Zoe. So thank you guys so much, all six of you, for being patrons of the show. Seeing this Patreon community grow 
makes me want to cry. I'm not going to, but I'm just saying it makes me want to cry and I really, really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. Of course, make sure you are subscribed to Intoxicated Podcast and Intoxicated Reviews, separate channel hosted by Corey West on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, essentially whatever podcasting app you use, make sure you do hit subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. If you really love the show, you can rate and review it as well. We would greatly appreciate that. You can follow us on social media and that is Intoxicated Podcast everywhere but Twitter and on Twitter, we are in underscore toxicated. And make sure you tell your friends about the show because what I've come to learn is that word of mouth is actually huge. So if you like the show, tell a friend or two. We would love some new listeners. But anyways, guys, I'm going to cut this off because I am sweating and I am just going to go sleep for probably four hours. Try to kick this sickness. But I hope you guys enjoy this really awesome episode with Jesse and Ben. So we can really just start this whenever I say. But are we on? Yeah. Um, We're on the Intoxicated Podcast, everybody. (gasps) The weekend of Father's Day. And so I am here with two amazingly handsome, hardworking, awesome dads. Well, I mean, well, we yeah, have... between us, it averages out. <laughs> <laughs> two fives make a ten, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we have two returning guests, people. <laughs> Jesse. Hi. And Ben. Hello. Ben, this is your first time back since being on with Melanie, right? That is correct. Yeah, yeah. I forget what we talked about. Your relationship and love. Mm, doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Can't relate. Boring. Can't relate. <laughs> Can't relate. So we are here today, and it is early. I mean, like, it's early for me. Jesus. It's early for me. <laughs> and It's 11, 10 a.m., guys. Well, I've already washed my car. <laughs> Jesse's mowed his lawn and his neighbor's. And my pubes. <laughs> it's, it's, with the lot. lawnmower also. Yeah. Lots of, a- Saturday morning. <laughs> Trim down, baby. That's, it's a Saturday morning trim down. Yeah. Jesse was straight up asleep when we called. I just want to say. Straight up. Yeah. Okay. Well, why was that? Because uh, oh, I was yeah, up all was... night taking care of a baby. Yay. Uh, I was up all night taking care of a baby. No, yeah. You called. It was like quarter after 10. I have never. Like, this is the first time since he's been born and probably months before because pregnancy is also keeps you up at night. But mm-hmm. um, yeah. I've never slept in that long. And I, I felt weird. I yeah. just woke up and I was like. Huh? I know. <laughs> what day is it? Yeah. And yeah. yet we, me and Ben were worried that you were at my place. Because that's yet. where I was going. <laughs> I, was, I sure was on the way there. It all worked out. We're here. We are here together now. Uh, and even though it is before noon, we are drinking mm-hmm. some whiskey and coffee. And Jesse also has backup beers. I do. But the lime, white it, lime. The taste of summer for dads. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, isn't give Bud some Light your, Lime kind of a just, girly beer? What? Isn't Bud Light Lime kind of a girly beer? <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's like a heartbreak. Here's another thing about dads that you don't know: they love girly drinks for like, sure. <laughs> like hurricane, like my dad drinks Revs sometimes. Like, oh wow! Yeah, it's like hummingbird nectar. That's, <laughs> yes. that's like yeah. pure sugar. Like, yeah. ugh. he's just like need to get some Revs, boys. It's like, boys what are we gonna camp. do with all this Boons? I don't know. Boil it down, put it in a smaller bottle. <laughs> That's Boots. Rev. Oh my like, god, that's so true. Margaritaville? Come on, yeah. man. Like, I don't know away. if Jimmy Buffett has any kids, but like, he probably I does. assume so, yeah. Whether he knows about it or not, he does. He's too laid back to know. I, know. I love that when I when we had our, arranged the earlier recording time, I was like, oh, well, I'm assuming that we'll probably just have some coffees. Like, it'll probably be a sober cast. And then you guys were like, nah. No. no. Like, that's it. That ain't the fucking name of this podcast. No. <laughs> so, whiskey and Bud Light Lime is uh, what's happening yep. right now. So, let's. You're not going to hear anything, but we're going to cheers anyway. It'll be like a, with, a hollow thunk. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm going to put an awesome Oops. sound effect in right now. Sarah, put a, put a sound of a clink. Clink, clink. Oh, I sound thought you just meant in. like a Hanna Barbera, like. <laughs> 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 I do the air horn a lot. Bang. Like El Cabong with the guitar smashes it over. I did it. I did it for you. Jesse's on. Jesse and Ben are on bell duty because you guys are kind of far away from me. Because so. I hate Eastlink. <laughs> but shall we get into this? Eh? You're both dads. Mm. Fairly new dads. Would oh, yeah. you say what's what's the um, what's the time frame where you're no longer a new dad? Like after uh, after two years? After maybe? eighteen months? I'm gonna say. I mean, according to the government, yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, okay. Well, the, well, the government doesn't give eighteen month paternal leave, or maybe they do. I don't even. It's know. it's uh, yeah. Well, it's eighteen months like parental leave. Anybody can take it, but yeah. generally speaking, it's usually mama because she got the boobies. Yeah, the, the boobies. boobies are necessary for yeah. for most kids. The boobs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I 
would say, but you, yeah, okay. So, well, here's the thing too. If I have, a, if I have like a 12 year old kid, and then I have another kid, some people call me a new dad then because it's based on when your last child was born. Yeah, you like re up. Like, oh, uh, he's a new dad again. Oh, yeah. okay, got like you. your hymen grows back. Your yeah. dad hymen. Your yep. dad hymen. You gotta bust yeah. it all over yeah. again. Somewhere around at 18 month mark, your your <laughs> <laughs> your new child the pokes a finger in your butthole. And <laughs> the government will pay for your hymen for 18 months. They will. Then. Yep. Oh my God. And also, they won't properly tax it. I found that out the hard way. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got we got raked over the coals with taxes because... Uh, Made too much money! Yeah, I guess. Well, <laughs> yeah. Sandra, Sandra got EI for a year and, they, yeah. and then she found out like, oh, they don't tax you nearly enough. Oh. So we got screwed. Yeah, it's, it's a hard one. But that's uh, that's something the dads talk about is taxes. taxes. <laughs> Damn thing, government like, taking going, my money! Going back to the like, when when do you cease to be a new dad? It's yeah. like, it, that, and the fact that there's not like a hard and fast measurement, it it's it goes back to like just parenthood in general is that there are so many books and experts and everything that like this is the rule or even like nurses will tell you like you have to do it this That's way right. And then, like, another nurse will walk in and be like, here's the rule, uh, something totally yeah. different. And yeah. and that's true of that I've learned about, like, being a parent is just... <clears throat> Fuck everyone. Well, everybody's going to tell you rules, or yeah. you can look online and you can find rules basically to accommodate whatever behavior you want to take yeah. on. I know. So yeah, just, it's true. just, like, chill out and do it. <laughs> The way you want to do it. If you yeah. want, if you want your way of things to be justified, you could probably go down a few Google searches yeah, and find you, someone else who said what you think. There's some proof positive That's out there. So it's gonna true. echo. Yeah. Reddit would probably have a lot. Oh yeah, For sure. And in fact, and you'd have people arguing on either side. The internet yeah. is a cesspool of cancer. Mm, <laughs> it's it true. is. Yeah. <laughs> I I posted on okay. I posted on Reddit once for the podcast. What? Because what, I was what in subreddit. I, it was in the Ask Us Any... Ask Us AMA. It was in the AMA oh, one. Oh, yeah, okay. Because yeah, yeah. there's a bunch of random ones in there. It's not just celebrities posting the AMA one. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I have a drunk podcast and we need to talk about some stuff. Ask Us Anything. And I got fucking reamed. They were like, this what? one... Like, like, they were so mean. What did they ask? They were just like, I, I'm sure your mom won't mind missing an episode or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a like, question. Yeah. And oh, I got called. What did they call me? Uh... They called me a word. Oh, fuck, what was it? Dire- dialect? 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 Di- well, dialect is like a like a kind of language. It's like, a word that means someone who's a piece of shit, essentially. Der- der- <laughs> derelict? derelict? Derelict! There it is! Yeah, yeah, der- der- I can't. derelict. Derelict my balls. Bro. Yeah. Derelict. Yeah. Wow. Someone really called me that. that out of they yeah. called you garbage. Somewhere. And then garbage. I was like, I derelict will never garbage. post derelict. on Reddit again. Ever, ever. No. Oh, I will yeah. stay the fuck away. See, I uh, we... We post TQ videos. Yeah. Do you but, get, yeah well, we'll we'll do mention you, that later. But, but it's it's tough to ask for help on Reddit, for sure. Like, if you're like... Yeah. If, if people think you're trying to promote something yeah, at all, the they're thing, like, get fucked. I know. Because if I had said, we're just a bunch of friends getting drunk... Ask us anything. Yeah, they probably, and we're here to answer your questions. It, yeah, but because I said it's for a podcast, you have to word it perfectly. You have to word it so that it does. Podcast. You have to word it so it sounds like it didn't come from a company. Basically, oh is yeah. what the thing yeah. is. People yeah. need to fucking so when relax. we we post our videos on Reddit, but I post them specific to the game in the game specific ones. Yeah, and people are fine with that, and they're okay with yeah. that. Yeah, for the yeah, most part, you have to like know the rules of that particular subreddit. I guess I've Who's, never looked. There must be a. Dad, so like oh, dad, there's gotta be. Oh my god, yes, Are you there kidding? has to be. Probably. I've never looked, me yeah. either, but that's part of it. I don't need somebody else's, advice. Oh, or it's a dad no. Reddit that's created and no one's posted it. That's right, yeah, because everybody's too busy, <laughs> no one wants to look. That's right, or every dad thinks that they're doing it the right way. Like, oh, they're I like, I don't this. have time to be on Reddit, I'm out in my driveway I listening bet... to Led Zeppelin washing in my car. <laughs> I bet the single <laughs> dad Reddit. <laughs> The single dad Reddit probably has more traffic. <laughs> oh, probably yeah. they're like, oh my god, what the fuck do I do? There's probably like, like dad for dad Reddit too. There's like dad looking for dad. A dream daddy Reddit? <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> to get dad on dad action. Just need some of that uh, hot D on D. Let's go back to the beginning. So the, the very beginning of re- like the I'm pregnant moment. What was that like? I got a text at work. <laughs> I also got a text at work. Actually, when Wait, I got my pregnancy, no. Oh, well, oh yes. No. And she was like, I "Could be that. yours." That's right, because she was in the bathroom at her work, right? Yep. yep. So I and got a text. She texted me from her work to me. You're talking about Melanie. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. They're all referring to her. Sandra yeah. was yeah. just yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. So so Melanie sent me a message of it was it was two pictures. It was the first picture was of the like pee stick. With like the one like 
control line and then like maybe a very faint line, pink line beside it and then the second picture was her just going like huh? yeah, like, yeah, arms up and just like yeah. Yeah. maybe the that second track? was gonna be like her holding the pee stick underneath herself taking yeah, a selfie on sure. the toilet I would yeah. totally check do it that. like I gotta make sure that's like, that, that's me being like did you pee on that <laughs> Is that who's, somebody else's pee? Whose piss is this? <laughs> Wait, let me smell. What's that bottle in the background? All right, it does smell like dinner last night. <laughs> oh, my God. Asparagus. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, you hate asparagus. <laughs> what was the reaction, though? Like, what what goes through your head when you find Mine, that out? Okay, this is going to sound bad, but let me finish the whole thought. Mine was immediate disappointment. <laughs> because, like... I'm letting you finish. What? I'm letting you. Finish. Yeah, no, no. It wasn't like disappointment that I was pregnant. It was disappointment that we got pregnant so fast. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, was, no. I was like, I was like, really? First shot? Or, or like, it was like <laughs> we barely shot? fucked. Not, not maybe not first shot, but it was like Early within on. two weeks of trying, and yeah. we maybe had had sex like four times. Yeah. And it was yeah. right after we got married, and I was like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted yeah. to fuck. Right. <laughs> like yeah, I had yeah, a yeah. whole itinerary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, because that's probably, yeah, that's the best part. All sitcoms have taught <laughs> me care. that it's impossible. And then I was just, unless you're like a teenager. But yeah. <laughs> unless you're a teenager, it's like, I can't, I don't know. Yeah, we were in the same room when I masturbated. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know where all these, like, yeah, these, like, the people have, people seem to have such a hard time getting pregnant. But I guess, yeah, we're just really lucky. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair. Like Melanie and I we were, are were kind of the same thing because we you were also, like maybe a month. That yeah, it. Okay. I think you hear about more people having trouble with pregnancy because people who don't really don't say shit because they know they're lucky. So they're like, right, yeah. I'm that's not going to rub this in anyone's face. Yeah. That's very true. Uh, so, and that's the same with like basically anything on the internet ever is that yeah. vocal the bad shit minority. you hear about more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The vocal minority is louder than everybody else because they're too happy doing their own thing being happy yeah exactly but, like i got nothing to complain about yeah 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 um and so yeah it sucks for people who have trouble but I kinda, this is gonna sound terrible too but i kind of wanted a little trouble <laughs> it's like, what, <laughs> like, at least a little bit of a lead up yeah know? yeah I because, like, <laughs> because even yeah it's it's a tricky subject but yeah if you're not if not not using protection it's yeah. a lot of fun yeah yeah well, and, and if you're in a stable relationship where you want to have a family even better because then you can just do it and whatever yep. happens happens yep, you know what i for mean sure. so you're like, like it was just... like if you don't then like oh okay we get to keep trying and yeah. if it happens then you're like oh okay this was our goal yeah, yeah. and of course like i know there's people out there probably listening and being like well fuck you because yeah, i had to like, try and do tests and we're all doing ivf and, and, like, i'm not and... i'm not shitting on any of that that's no, probably no, no. really really Everyone's difficult so different that's the thing like i know you can't Yep. Like this, this is what happened for you guys. This is not what happens for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I like to get all different Ooh. perspectives on the show, but this just so happens to be who, like your guys' perspectives. Yeah. And what, ha- what has happened to you guys? Yeah. So yeah. then, yeah. So I got a text at work with the peace stick being like, I think it was like my mom was coming down this weekend or that weekend. And I was like, Hey, what do you want to do with mom? And she's like, well, we could tell her I'm pregnant. And I was like, Oh my god! Oh, no, no, we're not doing that. No. <laughs> or we could <laughs> not. Did you freak out at work? Like, did you? No, have a I moment? didn't. I didn't freak out. I, I, it didn't. It didn't hit me for like a week at least. Mm. Even Saunders was the same. She's just like, yeah. So I read it was pregnant. Cool. Like, all right. And then, and then, like a week later, when maybe even longer than that, I don't know. I, it, it, it didn't. It's not the TV show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. huh? Neat. It's almost like a countdown time where you're like, okay, I've got nine months left to live. <laughs> and, then, and then my life belongs to this child. Yep. <laughs> it yep. really is. I'm like, just like, okay, we're going skydiving. Uh, it, no, too dangerous. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Got to take a life insurance policy. Yeah, there I it is. Definitely had to do that. That's the exciting thing. Um, we still haven't done that. It's not great. You Actually, should do that. I do yeah. have, I do, we do have, we do have life. I've got life insurance. For all my like debt, basically, and okay. nobody's gonna get any benefit. I'm just not gonna pass on any like credit cards. Okay, fair. Uh, but I mean, yeah, so that's not exciting. But will the will is the one that we haven't done. That we did. Oh yeah, I haven't done that either. Yeah. Oh no. god, guys, get on it. But hey, I'm worth like a million bucks if I'm dead. So that's cool. There you go. Damn. But who's getting it? I guess Sandra. Yeah, it's the main <laughs> beneficiary. But like, ben, no will. Do you want me, like, do you want me to write you in, Ben? Is that your idea? Well, I'm curious. <laughs> you know, I know you don't have a will, so. <laughs> and so, in both of your guys' cases, you went into it kind of. It was kind of planned, sort of, right? Oh yeah, 100%. is that how you yes. would say it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we were, it was. Right. Uh, yeah. It was yeah. for Melanie and I. It was 100 percent planned. We were like, yeah. "Yep, we're doing this. Okay, Same. let's uh, let's do this." Like to the point where, like, 
she Melanie's a big uh, researcher and everything. And when she gets into something, she'll like really focus on it. Yeah, I've uh, seen her bachelor research. Oh it's my intense. goodness! Yeah, yeah, like absolutely. And she was a journalist. Like that's I think that's a yeah. part of. I don't know if that's a quality she had that that then she's like I should apply this to journalism, or if that's come from journalism and that just fueled that fire. I don't know. But she's Ma- a big res- researcher. So right. maternalism. <laughs> Going back to like that that like looking for advice and then finding out that you basically can find advice for whatever you're looking for. Whatever the result. You yeah, whatever, whatever, yeah. basically, like, yeah, proof positive you're looking for. Um, Melanie's a big researcher. I'm the opposite. I do not research things. Yeah. Uh, I like to research, like, dumb shit. <laughs> yeah. But, I, but like, the important things, I don't research that much. But, yeah, so we were, like, we were totally planned. Melanie's, like, bought all the books, and, uh, and we followed along. But, like, I only followed along because Melanie was following along, basically. Right. But, and she got an app. Got it, like even when we were tr- like before we uh, like when we were gonna start trying, she got an app that's like tracking when she's ovulating and yeah. everything, and then it's basically like yeah. the app is like the notification of like, hey, fuck tonight. And that's hilarious. I want the I want to make an app just like that, but with that bluntness. Mm. Like rather than getting a notification, get, like, like you're ovulating, like, you fucking high like, chance yeah. of getting pregnant. Like it should just say. You should fuck tonight. Like, or, or <laughs> alternatively, it's it's the same app, but you put in what you like. What's your what's your yeah. what's your goal? Yeah, kind of like, like naming your alarms. Yeah. yeah, love it. Or even when like you, you you put it on like the side of the bed and you're and you're having sex and you look over and your phone's like, oh, you fucking you're like, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Want me to vibrate a little? <laughs> or alternatively, you put in that you're like, I'm trying to not get pregnant, and it's like it's like you're ovulating. You ain't fucking. You <laughs> should say the hell home, girl. You ain't fucking you imagine and it always an happens to prevent too. you from getting pregnant like ah uh, <laughs> damn it well, well well from my perspective stop having sex <laughs> my, oh. that that's my perspective like my period tracking app i'm like oh my god i am the horniest i've ever been and then right. i will open it up and it's like ovulation yeah, high chance like, of getting pregnant this is because like, your body is telling you to breathe god damn it <laughs> yep okay <laughs> so what was it like going through the actual pregnancy so like sitting back and like watching your girlfriend and wife. I, I imagine it's a lot like being a butler. It is a bit. I've never been a butler, but I felt like I have. You yeah. butle. You butle you're just, some. You're mm. just very accommodating, right? Yeah. To yeah. whatever they say. See, this is... Okay. Sandra's going to be pissed, but I don't care. <laughs> She's not in the room. What when, when she, she was had pregnant, her episode. Yeah. She was pregnant, and she was like... Mm, I think like maybe three months pregnant around there, because she got pregnant in August, and it was like... Late September? No, no, that's two months pregnant. Yeah, that's no, no, that's literally the next month. Yeah, no, never mind. <laughs> she must have gotten pregnant earlier than that. Yeah, no, she was pregnant in like July. Anyways, we were going through buying a house, <laughs> and I am probably the more financially cognizant of the two of us. Mm-hmm. Right. So when we were going through looking houses and stuff, <clears throat> we we mostly agreed for the um on which houses were shit and which were like ones we were interested in. But um, I, I like our realtor. I could tell was like trying to mark us up mm-hmm. and like make us pay more. And so right. I was like, "Just do it, just do it." And I was like, "No, like yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I, I know what he's doing." Like I, I, and I kept saying, "Like you realize that it's his job to sell houses for as much as they can." Yeah, yeah like he us. gets paid based on commission. So and, the more you spend on a house, the bigger his paycheck. Yeah, and and I was just like, "We can get this for lower. We can get this for lower," and that that caused yeah. a few fights. <laughs> Um, because she, she just wanted to like just it's like she, he's a realtor he knows more than you I can't believe you think he you, you like she wanted you know it to be done she wanted it to be done yes exactly she's yeah, like I, I, I need, get that I'm I want my nest done. for my baby one hundred percent basically yeah. and, nesting mode yeah. and I, I don't that. blame her for thinking that way but that that part was kind of sucks so, and eventually I did like offer like two hundred or twenty thousand like less than it was listed for that ah. he wanted us to offer and we got it so nice. I was like. Justified. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, yeah. like you don't know unless you ask. And I think a lot of people are are like really uncomfortable with haggling. And then buying a house is like fucking high stakes haggling. Sandra won't yeah. push someone away at the door. She will hear yeah. their entire spiel for twenty minutes about donating money. Or if they, she gets a call, Aww. she will never hang up. Yeah. Um. Well, so, and, and like Very Melanie nice. can't. Melanie won't ask for if she if we're selling something online, selling like a used piece of furniture or something like that. She'll be like, I don't know, twenty bucks, and I'm like, babe, this is worth a hundred, right? And this, and somebody high. will pay a hundred, yeah. or we'll start at a hundred, and somebody will pay us eighty, and that's already four times what you, what it, you want. Because yeah. she's very much the same thing. She's like, I just want it done. Exactly. I just get want it, it done. Of, so like, get twenty bucks, get it out of my face. And 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 then on the inverse of that is like, we've we've been um, kids' toys get used 
for such a narrow window that there's actually a huge market for reselling children's toys. Right. And we found that out after initially buying all of the like like brand new top rate stuff that we were like gotta have the best for our baby and then we're baby like don't give a shit. oh but like yeah baby doesn't give a fuck <laughs> no, and we no. could have bought this for twenty five dollars on Kijiji but yeah. then but even now like Melanie's gotten a lot better at at like finding the deals and everything right. like she specifically seeks them out but then if somebody like just this past week somebody was saying offering uh, like that activity cube you guys have one. Uh, oh, oh the, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and like Finn really liked it, so Melanie's like, "We should get one of those." She looked at Facebook Marketplace. Somebody's selling one over in Coal Harbor. Perfect, cool. They Amazing. want twenty five bucks for it, sold. And I was like, "Did you ask if they want twenty or if they would take 20 <laughs> And but like, no, I just Aww. I wanted it. I, I wanted it, so, so uh, I just said. I, I always feel that Kijiji anything on Kijiji is mm. always listed higher it's, than what they will actually take. One, every single every one of them time, is marked because every time I post something there, I'm like. I want 80 for it, so I'm going to mark it for 100. And, yeah. And 100%. Yeah, and absolutely. see if that flies, and then if it yeah. doesn't, you... And then, of course, I, like, I, so I was picking it up after work. I brought, I brought two 20s with me. I did not make change, specifically because I showed up at their house, and I was like, I've oh, only got, I've only got two 20s. You asshole. I've only got two 20s. <laughs> uh, I was like, do, do, like, would you take, tw-? like, I was looking at it, and it had, like, they, they had a dog, and so it was, there was, like, they opened it up, like, to show me, oh, and you can put some toys in here, and it was just filled, like, they didn't even clean it, like, it was full of dog hair and shit, and I was like, would you take 20 for it? And she's like, well, there were a bunch of people who wanted it, and, and Melanie said 25, which is why I said that you guys could have it, and I was like, well, I only brought two, I only brought two 20s, and she's like, well, I've got Melanie's email address, she said she could email me the money, and I was like, Oh my god! All right, good day. Yeah, <laughs> and so no, we picked. Yes. I, I gave her a twenty, and Melanie e transferred her wow. five dollars. Oh, what? Which, it wasn't even like e- transfer the twenty five. That's what no, I thought. I yeah, gave wow. I gave her a twenty so I could walk away with it. Bluff, great. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! I didn't I've had no. for five dollars. I. Yeah. I'm pissed because I've had someone do that to me yeah. and I refuse them too. Yeah. Like I, I, it was, I was like selling something for 90 bucks. He's like, Oh man, I only brought 80. I was like, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll message the next person and yeah. see a chump. Like, well, that's the thing. I brought 40. To, like swindle me. Yeah. yeah. Really? I brought 40. I was like, I'll pay 25. Yeah, that's true. But I didn't make change. If she had change, she, she, she would have got I, it. Then that was the thing. Like I'll give her the opportunity because there is that window of like, do it you want it? Too much of a pain in the ass for them. Yeah, I was like, "Here's, here, I've got forty. Do you have change?" And they're like, "Yeah, absolutely, I've got change, and no problem." Or they're like, uh, "No, but twenty's fine." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. then you're testing the waters to find out, like, do they actually was twenty actually a decent price for them, and they're <laughs> right. okay with that, or yeah. Damn. And but no, but they were like tutorial Haglin. on Kijiji. Dad <laughs> Haglin. 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 Dad. Dad. Daglin. Dad. Dad Haglin. Dag, nope. Daglin. It's not a good spoonerism. These are terrible. Oh, you should have both feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that part out. <laughs> that won't see the letter. <laughs> what was... Yes, don't buy your baby new shit is the, is the basic premise. That's totally Dad bad. tip number one. Oh, Except a car don't seat. Give, don't car give seat a... literally has to be new. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Or at least... 100%. Somewhat new. Yeah, it can't be... I wouldn't... Don't buy a car seat if it's more than two years old. Okay. Uh, see, this is what dads do. They buy the shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 If they're like... Okay, so... Everybody's going to have rules for you. Everybody's going to have advice for you. You can listen to all of them. There are going to be conflicting rules. Decide for yourself what's good for you and your baby. But uh, also... That's the best rule that everyone see. should listen to. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> there are no rules. Yeah. yeah. The rule is there are no rules. It's basically Except a wasteland keep, out there. Keep them alive. Have yeah, you that's seen... it. Keep your baby alive and happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have to be happy too. You guys have seen uh, Mad Max Fury Road? Yes. yes. It, it's That's basically raising a child. Oh, man. It's essentially that. Yeah. No law. Mm-hmm. And it's a car chase, start to finish. Ooh, and there's yeah. a guy with like a skull mask always trying to kill your child. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> and is that is that is that not normal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did, did I like get cursed somewhere? Yeah, oh life? shit. I knew I shouldn't have talked down to that gypsy. He always, <laughs> he always pops out of the painting and every day at six PM. Oh my god, that's terrifying. <laughs> oh, I was so patronizing to her, damn it. <laughs> I want to know. Mm, yes. what the birth experience was like because we heard it from Melanie and Saunders' perspective uh, on the Mother's Day episode. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I was pretty jarred <laughs> yeah. by what I heard from them. I want to know what it was like for you guys to see all that happening. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to retell the whole story because 
feel like this would be the third time it's been told in this podcast. Yeah. Because I think we we said go it back and go back and listen to Jesse and Saunders episode. Oh wait, no, and she was still pregnant. The Mother's then. Day episode. Oh yeah, that's right. She was pregnant. No, yeah, okay. So it'd yeah, just yeah. be the second time, but yeah. still. Okay. Um. Yes. I mean, I was never uneasy. Like. I, I'm, Did I'm you say uneasy? Uneasy. <laughs> uneasy. <laughs> I was easy the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> All of the lights. Um, <laughs> beca- okay, so I'm of the mindset, and I know I'm like, a lot of people don't think this way, but I, unless a doctor tells me, or, or a nurse tells me, you should be worried about this, I don't worry about it. That's good. That's like, a good quality. Um, if they test for something and then you're waiting for it, that makes me a little anxious because mm-hmm. they're like, they're, you're yeah. waiting to find out if you should be worried about there's something. There's an uncertainty there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was never, like, a, a lot of the times they're just like, oh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then, like, <laughs> halfway through the process of being told it's fine and being told different things, I'm like, you know what? I think some of you are full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because yeah, I'm like, you're now saying conflicting things that another doctor or nurse told me differently. So now I'm losing trust in you guys. So uh, now then I felt like, okay, now we have to take this into our homelands. We have to like literally say like, this is what's happening. What you're saying is not adding up to what we are seeing. Yeah. Right. So, and if somebody can explain it, great. But we need somebody to yeah, listen. They kept sending her home being like, she's fine. She's fine. Then we have to keep going back. She's getting worse and worse. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And then, like, when you see more doctors and nurses start pouring into the room, oh, that's God. when you're like, ah! Yeah, I was, like, I was, like, getting faint, and they gave me a big jar of apple juice. <laughs> like, here you go, Dad. And I was like, thank you. This, yeah. is, this is very hard for me. <laughs> Can we like, water this down? It makes my pee hot. Because <laughs> I imagine you feel so, like... Helpless. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> but at the same time, I was always... In my head, I was always like, we are literally in the best room yeah, in sure. the country... To yeah. be in right now, yeah. like this is yeah. one of the most highly revered children's hospitals. This is where I was born, so like they they, they can figure it out. There's a sense of com- there's a sense of calm in the chaos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, way. you still worry a bit because no, ma- sometimes no matter what happens, like a doc- no doctor can save what's going on. But yeah, it was okay. And then he had the seizure, and that was really traumatic. Yeah, and fuck. I did not like that. But then yeah. after that, he was fine. So it was just yeah. I don't know. Like a part of your dad brain and even husband brain is just like. Pfft, you you stop. You can't complain. Yeah. You just fucking do it. Yeah. Like like if your baby shits himself, you can't be like, I don't want to. You, you just, just fucking it. do it. Like, you and the faster it. you fucking do it, the faster it's over with. So yeah. like, that that I think that's where like bachelor brain versus like dad brain goes. Yeah. Because someone living alone is just like, eh, I'll let that sit and rot for however long. I don't give a shit. But dad brain, you're like, I'm about to just fucking do it. So was that immediate? <clears throat> like, did you get that that? sense of urgency like immediately or was it more gradually yeah. learned no it was like it was once Sondra was like had surgery and could not fucking move and and i was just like okay i just have to do it you it doesn't adapt. matter you just adapt. here's it well for, there's no time to think about it you just for us do it melanie's yeah. pregnancy was so tough oh, like yeah. she had such a rough yeah. pregnancy she was like miserable the whole time basically it basically felt like she had like a flu for nine months oh, and like and again, with the rules, it's like, yeah, but that ends at like, you know, if you're the exp- if this is this yeah. bad for you, it Bullshit. ends at three months. No, it doesn't. <laughs> like, OK, then you can look online and find other people who are telling you, yep, no, but at six months, it's always done. And then you hit six months and you go like, but it's, I still have it. So you do the research and you look online and go, yeah, but by nine months, it's end. Oh, God. <laughs> because no, the baby comes out. Once your out. baby's born, you're yeah. definitely no longer pregnant. Exactly. So, yeah. I, so it, in my mind, that like for me, it was like training every step of the way. Right. So. As it got more difficult for Melanie, I found that I think at, at the risk of at the risk of sounding like really old fashioned, I, I believe that I believe that men are have uh, are equipped with a from a biological sense, from an evolutionary sense with a more like practical. There's the problem. I have to solve it. Exactly. And yeah, that's where yeah, I think yeah. a lot of challenges arise. And in that's why we're terrible listeners. Exactly. Because <laughs> because sometimes sometimes Melanie just wants to she's like upset about something and she just wants to then. talk about it. Yeah. And she'll, and, and sometimes she'll just want to say like, I'm upset and this is why. And repeat it a few or four, like three or yeah. four times. And I'm like, I'm like, but here we can solve it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, this or, is what we can do. or so I'm trying you to just solve like it. Fixing it. I don't get yeah, it. Like the, or like <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to solve it or I'm trying to say, well, here's what we should do. Here's the, here's, here's what I think maybe we, how we can help fix this. Or here's maybe the action that we can take to move forward. That's not what she wants. No. But she wants you to just my, listen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and like so I understand that, but in and even still understanding it, I have a hard time 
sometimes with it. I have a hard time not going, there's a problem, I want to fix it. Right. And uh, I think, it, yeah, like you said, it's just hardwired into our brain. It's just like, yeah. wait, so wh- where do you get into the part of the story where you fix what you're crying about? Like, <laughs> well, I, don't know. Yeah, I yeah. never, no one ever is dumb enough to say that. No, I hope. well, yeah. But in your brain, yeah. you're just like, no happily married man is you're, you're, uh, dumb you're, enough you're, to. In your brain, you're like, okay, I've heard the problem. I've already thought of like five solutions. Why didn't you do any of those or, or something right. like that? Yeah. But that's not like, especially when you're fucking pregnant yeah your brain doesn't think that way but but so i think part because melanie's pregnancy was so challenging it limited what she could do for herself and do for us as a family and so immediately you start taking on more and more of that of a dad role right away because you're taking care of somebody already Mm -hmm. and then for the rest of your life you never stop taking care of somebody so you, you you start taking care of somebody who is an adult who can do things for themselves right. and you start doing more and more for them as they get more and more fucking pregnant yeah. right. and hard, it gets harder and harder for them to take things on and then they have the baby and even if it's a perfect delivery they're still going to be laid up yeah you're fucked up yeah like they they pushed a watermelon out of their hoo-ha so like this is going to be this is going to be tough for them you're still going to be taking care of them and trying to take care of the baby the baby needs mama first because mama's got the boobs with the food mm. and everything. So you just you're there. It's kind of a trickle care down. Of, yeah, oh, you're trickle just down taking system. care of more you and more. You take care of mom. Mom takes care of baby. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then or or even or an inverse of that. There's like ba- like hierarchy of, of needs <laughs> that like baby's got the most needs. Mom takes care of baby. Mom's yeah. got like <laughs> mom needs to be in a good place for sure to take care of baby. So you got to take care of mom. And, yeah. and yeah. then do what you can yeah, for baby and, and that kind of thing. So there's, yeah, there's those elements of needs and your needs as a dad end up becoming very low. <laughs> they're, they're the lowest priority, basically. Yeah, they yeah. become Especially lower Especially during pregnancy and post-pregnancy. Um, and I think that's why dads love mowing the lawn and <laughs> washing the car and that kind of thing. Because in a small way, it's self-care. It's shit that needs to get done. It's a problem that you can look at and go, I can solve that with a very simple thing. Mm-hmm. And it's so fucking satisfying to mow a lawn now. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be the quote. <laughs> but I, did you did you enjoy it before, or do you just enjoy it more now? I enjoyed it when we bought a house. Nice. I didn't love mowing a lawn before we owned a house. When that became my lawn, I was like, damn, it feels good to mow a lawn. <laughs> well, because it's yours, and you take pride in doing it. And it's a and tangible it's, thing. It's a little bit of an escape, too. You can kind of... There's that. You get out in the yard, yeah. you and that kind of thing. It's like, the so... smell. I have Oh, I love the smell. Oh, it's so good. It smells like summer. Yeah, and mm. we have got an electric mower now, so it's all grass. Mm. And, and it's like, it's such a... I don't know. It's a, such a tangible thing, too, because yeah. you see your progress as you do it. And when you're done, you stand back and you look at it, and you're like, you had your hairy lawn first, and you will lo- step back and you go... Ah, there it is, a well-shorn yeah, yeah. lawn. And and it's just so, there's something so tangibly satisfying yeah. about seeing something, seeing the impact of your efforts immediately. I love that. Where in every other part of your life, there's, it's a constant. Continuous. It's a it's a constant, uh, I like, process. Right. You know, there's no, even you're the not done. is too, but it, it's slow enough that you can see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah so exactly. Like, you do it and you go, there, it's done. Yeah. And in a week's time. Like if you, you clean like, the house, within an hour, you, it's going to be so destroyed. That's yeah. but, oh but. Yeah, the lawn sure. mode that'll it's like I'm gonna change this diaper. I, I'll change this diaper. It's not the. La- I'm not gonna step back and go. Ha! Job well done. Yeah. Because no in, more diapers. Yeah. Because <laughs> in like an hour. In oh, I mean, I don't see Zach very much during the week. But if I'm here with him, I mean, usually just two or three times. Yeah. He takes one power shit in the morning, mm. and then he's got his routine, and then. <laughs> Okay, so you change him. First of all, you change him when he wakes up because he's probably got a nighttime full of piss. Yep. Um, and that, that those shit things are fucking heavy. I'm like, there's another baby in this diaper. Yeah, like Jesus it. Christ. It literally fills the diaper, and then there's nowhere for it to go. So it's just like you're we're, shocked we're, that like we're too paper, saturated. So here's the PJs. Paper towels aren't made of diaper because they hold like ten so gallons much. of water. One diaper. It's insane. Anyway, yeah. damn. Um, it's like a tampon. <laughs> I hope a tampon never gets as big as a diaper. I, I regretted saying that as soon as it came I like out you got like it's like a tamp. <laughs> nope, this is not good. Marie. Recently, I recently I sh- I showed a guy friend how absorbent tampons are, and mm. he was shocked. Yeah, well, I was because if say, you put that shit in a glass of water, it. The glass of water there was goes like away. A, a, yeah. a diaper left out in the back of my dad's truck or something, and it rained. And I picked up the next morning, and it was like, oh my god! And I was like, his, ah! his, his truck's totally dry. There's then, puddles everywhere, but the truck is my like. Dad, my dad said something like, 
Yeah. So now you know how often you could not change it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, saying that. Uh, save some diaper money, I guess. Uh, yeah. But no, and then okay, so yeah, so wake diaper. up in the morning. Yeah. Feeling like P Diddy with that's I was waiting for that one. P Diddy, get it? Because he Lol. pees. Um, that's such a dad joke. I know. Oh my god. Okay, if you're listening to this, drink every time they say a dad joke. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Anyways, all right. So then, uh, then, uh, yep. Lunchtime nap, or he shits in the morning, so that's two, and then after his nap, three, and then pretty much not till bedtime. So okay. like four times. That's not as yeah. bad as I thought. For some reason, I thought it would be a high. Oh, when they're when they're like one to three months or zero to three months, I should say. You're doing like way 12 a day. more. Oh often. yeah, yeah, it's way like, more. They yeah. shit and piss like every hour. Yeah, Jesus you're doing twelve Christ. a day. You're doing twelve diapers a day oh when they're that's so yeah. That, yeah, but, but they're we tinier. Live, they're tinier. We live in a golden age too of diapers because now you can get like a twelve hour diaper to put on them for night and everything. Yeah, like we get if night times. We brief we briefly briefly considered the environmental impact of the diapers before saying like eh, the I don't take give another. a. Fuck yeah, Planet could take another hit. <laughs> uh, take one, take another one for the team because we were like, we'll do cloth diapers and that kind of yeah. thing. And there's no way. Like, there's yeah. no fucking way. We were so yeah, naive to think that that's something that we would want to do. Right. Uh, and we like we wanted to beforehand because we're like, it seems like the nice thing to do. It seems like it's it's kind of like mm, it's like uh, like a classic like traditional like uh, yeah. diapers kind of situation. And then of course you're like. You're creating less waste and that kind of thing. You lose time, though. And when your baby is that... Yeah, like, maybe now? Maybe now we could transition to it because he's at, like, five diapers a day. So maybe now we could do that. But when a baby is new, you're, like, right. anywhere between, like... You're 12 and up diapers a day. Easy. Mm-hmm. Did you guys know how to change diapers before... It's not- very easy. Yeah. I don't know why people think it's hard. No, I know. It's people are afraid of it. extremely easy. I'm terrified <laughs> yeah. of it. The hardest part is when your kid's like my kid yeah. and he just tries to run away. That That's the hardest part. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually do it. But you know what's funny too? We just got new diapers that can like slide up. Oh, the pull up ones. And yeah. but they're pre-attached. Right. So you just slide them up and that's way easier. But it's the smell. It's so easy. Oh yeah, I gag every time. If it's yeah, shit, if it's probably... a shit diaper, I gag every time. Too much shit. I don't like the smell. The thing is, though, when it's just formula, actually, even even, oh. even formula is a little worse. <laughs> when it's just formula, it's not great because because it's just a paste, and it's not a great paste. But when it's just breast milk, now we were fortunate. We were very fortunate because Melanie was able to breastfeed and everything, and 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 not everybody gets to. <sighs> yeah, um, that's true. And and we that's fine. <laughs> yeah, and that but that's fine. Like, Do they smell more? No. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. I think you get formula it, smells the worst. Like you get it, like breast milk. Breast milk shits. You're just like, this is a breeze. It's kind of <laughs> a it's breeze. Like, yeah, wow. it's kind of sweet. Like there's no. It's a little sweet smelling, and it doesn't smell like a poop. It does ah, not smell like a poop. Really? It's just wow. a. It's just a paste that comes out of them, and you're like, this is cool. I can handle this. Ah. And it's so. It's so. It's almost like everything else about, like every step of the way, you get eased into it. Not You're yet. not suddenly given a three year old and it go and you go, Good fucking luck. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. with Some when you when you are that. if you're fortunate enough to breed and have your own baby Every step of the way, you're, you it, it leads into it. So I know a right. lot of people are really nervous about being becoming parents and that kind of thing. I love kids and I was very excited to become a dad. I, I absolutely mm. love kids. A lot of people are like a lot of people early on, they're like, I want to be a nurse and they're very passionate about it. And their passion, that's their passion in life is helping people through nursing and that kind of thing. That's never been something that I have had. I, when I was a teenager, I was like, I think I want to be a DJ. No, maybe I'll be an architect. And <coughs> that was just the whole, every step of the way through. And even into university and everything, I changed schools, I changed <coughs> programs. I didn't know what I wa- wanted yeah. to spend the rest of my life doing, but I love kids. I didn't want to be a teacher. But now that I've got my 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 own my own child, I was like that. There's my passion. That's Aww. where my passion is, right there. Oh, That's so sweet. And and but and some people are very very lucky. My cousin, he he knew he wanted to be in the air force. Right. And from like 14, he catered every like he like pointed his life in that direction and he was in he air cadets Top Gun, and everything he? Top Gun he loved fucking love Top Gun yeah I've got, and he pointed that his life was, in that the was direction. the source of his inspiration I can, and I can see it he's one of the youngest guys in, in Canada in the Air Force to ever get to the oh, point in his shit. in his career that he got to one yeah. of the youngest to get to uh, to his rank and, 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 and everything absolutely and he got there and that was his target and he was like there I made my goals and everything and around that same time started a family and realized 
actually, I think my family might be my priority now. Aww, mm. So things what, change. Yeah. So things change, you know, and that was that was his target. But he always had that <laughs> laser focus, that passion for that one thing, and he worked very hard towards it. So I think a lot of people kind of struggle to find like what they want to do. And for me, I was very lucky that having a family was what Aww. I wanted. It was ultimately what I wanted. Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, like I said, you're not thrown into the middle of it right away. You, you you're you, you're eased into it. Eased in, and yeah. you have help in the beginning. Yeah, a little bit, right? yeah. If you're if a you're lucky, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're not lucky, yeah. you've got like you have parents, you know, who are nearby or family who can come and help you yeah. and that kind of thing. Not everybody has that. Some people, yeah, a lot that's... of people, are on their own with it. Yeah, I think the more fucked up you are too. Like Cassandra was so screwed up when he was born. We had lots of help, right? Both medically and familial. Familially, familially, <laughs> family, yeah. familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you? I had a lot to say, but I wanted to let you finish, and now I forgot. Did you? Say. I, well, to say. Well, my you I started was, to ramble for sure. I, I, I was know. like, I was "Oh like, god, where?" I was like, going? "Oh, that's a good point. I'm going to come back to that." Well, because shit. You, well, Jesse, you and I's like our friendship, like, was at its peak when we were both single. Yeah. Um. Did you always know that you wanted to be a dad? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 I for sure. I was like, um. Okay, so when you're saying like when you found out you were, if you were pregnant, where did it hit you? And that didn't do anything. But now, now, now that I think about it, and I'm going back, it's when I was told he was a boy. Oh. That's when I was just like, oh like, like huge inward gasp. Because then I was just like, oh shit, it's on me now. This like, is I, real. Like, yeah, not, not that it's fully on me, but like he's going to look to me to what to be a man, right? Yeah. And I'm like, and what that means now. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Or when he becomes a man, yeah. right. twenty years down the line. So like, that's when I was. That's when I put my dad pants on. I think for the most part, I was just like, "Oh shit, okay." That all makes right. it really real. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, khakis. I went back and forth on what I hoped it would be, like first girl, first boy, or whatever. Yeah. I didn't really know because um, I think I think I I kept saying like I want a boy first and a girl and then the boy can look after the girl. If any, big, like, big shit brother, goes down. like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. then I just thought, like, <laughs> Sandra's girl wouldn't take no guff from nobody. Aww. Yeah, that's true. Punch a motherfucker in the yeah, teeth. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I, I'm not scared of that at all. But then then when she was like, it's a boy, I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, <laughs> but most guys want boys, right? I actually yeah, wanted a girl. Uh, yeah. 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 I, 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 like I said, I was kind of 50-50. I, right. I, I didn't really... I, I think... I don't know. It's hard to say. It, it, I, I think I feel it's, like it's mattering less and less. It's one of those things too, where like you're like, mm, do I want this or this? Sometimes you gotta flip a coin, not so that the coin decides, yeah. but so that you know when you see you're like, oh, it's tails. I'm pretty sure you're you like, or the you're coin like, when oh, you got it's her tails. pregnant. <laughs> like then you then you then you know which one you wanted a little bit more. But even right. that's dangerous to do because mm-hmm. if you see what you wanted and you don't get it, then you're like, but I've that's gotta, I've got to deal with. But some that's stuff. the thing. But that's <laughs> the thing. Like. Like that's when, the thing when about it comes flipping to a coin. Gender, coin. I think you don't do it. You the just, coin you just doesn't need to decide. The coin lets you know what you actually wanted more. And yeah. and I didn't know what I. I didn't think I wanted one more than the other. But, but until they told us that it was a boy, and I was like, oh, I was kind of expecting a girl. But uh, still, yeah. still crazy I was excited. Say, do you want yeah. to flip the coin? Do you want to know what you wanted to know? Because I mean, <laughs> because, <laughs> I because, because, I because at the end of the day, you, fuck, you got no. You can't change it. But I think yeah, the I think the true. for us like for me anyway like them telling us the gender uh, or tell, telling us the sex of our child was was the coin flip. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know exactly. what no, I wanted. The coin flip more. was when you got her pregnant. The, well, like <laughs> then it's a coin flip. Seeing what the coin told me, yeah, right, was, yeah, was the part where I was like, oh, it's a boy. Oh, maybe I actually maybe I actually wanted a girl more this whole time, and and I didn't know until that moment, and I wasn't disappointed. It was just then was I, just I'm like, feeling. I'm just, I didn't realize I was expecting a girl. Right. And then at that moment, I needed to reframe also, things in my mind. We had like 20 different wives' tales tell us it was a girl. All like, oh, oh the really? signs are there. This is a girl. Oh, He's, fuck. The baby's riding high. This is a girl. Yep. Uh, yeah. More freckles. Oh, that's a girl for fucking sure. Yeah. And then, so we were like dead set. And then we knew that every single one of Saunders' friends were all having boys, 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 boys. Yeah, there's so a lot we're of like, boys going The on. universe has to equal up. Nope. We got there and it was like, boy, and we were like, well, shit. And we were in the exact was, same boat. That was also the moment where we clicked and said, oh, maybe everything we read is complete bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And, like, yep. and we're like, huh. All maybe right. It's, yeah, it's to be taken with a fucking grain of salt. A oh, big uh, grain of salt. A shaker a, of salt. A yeah. shaker. A lost a shaker box. of salt. Uh, I knew you were going to do that. A there. what? Yeah. A lost shaker of salt. Oh, my God. <laughs> From Margaritaville. Um, 
Well, yeah, that was our exact same experience as well. And 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 the weird thing about it was even people in my family who are not like uh, superstitious old wives tale types were just like, I think it's going to be a girl. Yep. And I was like, based on what? And they're like, I just have a feeling. And I'm like, yeah. you Where have a feeling? feeling? And but that was the thing. It was every single person. I not one person was included. like, I think you guys are going to have a boy. I'm like, why are you guessing? Yeah. Your <laughs> guess is not going to impact the I outcome never at really all. Know. You don't fucking know. Yeah. Like friends who get pregnant, I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. you can't. Whatever baby it is, I'm gonna love what it. What they what they do is they kind of picture your future, and yeah. they can like picture you running around with like a little girl or a little boy. Yeah. That and that's like their feeling. But then fucking, it's, it's literally a fucking coin. Flip. I just as far if, as I know, if I ever got pregnant, unless there's something in the water, all yeah. the angry, something in the water. <laughs> if I get pregnant, I feel like I would want a girl so much that I wouldn't get it. Like <laughs> that's the thing you want it too much. I, honestly, destiny would oh give my me God. a goddamn man. I saw this thing on Facebook, <laughs> and it was like. um uh, people shitting on this family for having too many kids because that's what the the internet does. It was like an Instagram photo of like tw- fourteen kids, yeah, raised from from shortest to tallest or oldest to youngest, or whatever. All of them boys, mm-hmm. and people were like, "I can't believe they had so many kids. It's irresponsible." And like someone was like, "They look really happy." And then I and then I commented, I said, "I'm pretty sure what they agreed to was we'll keep having them until we get a girl." Yeah. Oh my God, yeah, right. <laughs> Fourteen like, boys later, like my pussy is done, done. with men. <laughs> no. <laughs> He just like jerks off into his hand and throws it from across the room, and they have another one. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, that's where they're looking at. Oh my! God. I've had. But pregnancy mentors. is so hard. Like okay, so yes. like Melanie had such a difficult pregnancy. I know some people. For some people, it's like this is great. Like f- mm. some people really love being pregnant. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Some people have a really good pregnancy and a good delivery. No sweat. Absolutely, it happens. And clearly, you don't have fourteen children. <laughs> yeah. If you have a shitty, shitty time. Every yeah. step of the way. No, no. Especially yeah. the first one. The first one sets the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. You're like, well, um, hopefully it doesn't get you worse know what than I that. Think? Um, like, do you ever feel sometimes it sounds kind of weird too? And I don't want to equate it in any way, but I feel like it's somewhat of a similar feeling. But like when you get like when you get sick and you get to stay home and watch prices right, mm-hmm. that's kind of what I feel like. Maybe. Ah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if like a girl's pregnant, they're just like, okay, cool. I'm pregnant. That's what my body is doing now. That yep. is my number one priority. I am allowed to put my feet fucking exactly. up. Exactly. And no one's going to yeah. raise a fucking. No. Nobody's going to be like, hey, shouldn't it. you be doing laundry? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh, okay, there. Because, like, I don't like feeling to sick, but I like the, the ability to get all the stressors and work out of my brain and just fucking lie down and watch TV. And just focus on feeling like trash. Oh, pregnancy is probably much more difficult than that. In fact, it definitely is. But, like I said, I didn't want to equate them, but I'm just trying to get my male brain in the headset. Yeah, That's very similar. Yeah. So, what were some of the biggest challenges that you guys found? With which part? With with just having a Just being a dad. Having a new, maybe a new baby. Sleep. Let's go new baby. Sleep. Sleep. Okay, Yeah. 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 So one thing I raised my hand and why I did that. <laughs> yes, Jesse, do you have a question? <laughs> can you talk about your sleeping patterns before kids? I would usually like actually before I had kids, I would stay up to like two in the morning. A hundred percent. Me too. Nap. I was a night owl. I was a hundred percent a night oh, owl. I, oh yeah. Every time I came home from work, I would nap. Actually, that kind of stopped once I moved in with Sandra because okay. she's like, um, "You're just coming home and napping," and then I go to bed. <laughs> I go to bed two hours later, yeah. and you're up till four. So we see each other two hours a day. Because that's Not gonna the have Jesse this. I yeah. remember. Yeah. I remember oh, yeah. the Jesse oh, that I had... would stay up late. We would stay up late even on work nights. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you would sleep after work and then stay up late. Yeah, again. I would come home at, uh, t- after work at five because I lived right next to where I worked. Mm-hmm. I would get home in two minutes, conk out until like seven thirty, and then stay up till two in the morning, rinse, repeat. And then every time I woke up from my nap, I would work out. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, why I'm in such terrible shape. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I like, occasionally I will come home and have a nap, but then I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck, because I know <laughs> if I have a nap, then I won't get to bed till like, again, like 1, one thirty or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then if that happens, then I wake up at fucking 6 or 7 and I'm like totally a zombie at work and fuck then I get no up. shit done and then yeah. I get stressed out and then, like, it's a fucking cycle there's just a, more responsibility equals less sleep or right. at least you have to control when you sleep better and you can't because you have a baby well Here's I mean, the thing. you can do a degree i think a lot of people think like oh like i'm a dad i have to try to start being more responsible and yeah you might have to work out a little bit and yeah it might take a little bit for you to get into it but I've, i haven't had to try to be more responsible no it's just like here's here's the ways in which your life is changing and you just you just like okay that's how right. yeah you just I, do yeah. it it is it's just like it. this is how life is now like, again it comes back to that mentality of a, just fucking do it yeah, yeah just, just do it just do like it. who 
the f- okay, A, nobody cares if you complain. No. And B, it doesn't accomplish anything if you complain. That's it's a waste of time. And, and like, so, and C, people are probably going to like you a lot less if all you do is complain about your, sh- yeah. about your fucking life. I think a lot of people who like, the, like the, the impression that like, oh, you're a parent now, so your life changes totally and now you're boring and all you talk about is your kids. I uh. think those are the kind, the pe- for the people that that is true, those are the people who are either complaining about it yes. or who completely immerse themselves in the in the challenges of being a parent. And so that erases their identity. It doesn't have to erase your identity to Thank become you. a dad. This is a Thank big you. thing I've noticed too Thank since you for saying the, that. The, the, a big thing I've noticed too since becoming a dad is I don't feel like in my brain I've changed. Sure, I've taken on more responsibility, but I'm still a fucking I'm a degenerate. Like yeah. I'm mm. still Jesse. You're still very much so Jesse. <laughs> yeah, I like that your self your self definition is like I'm still a degenerate. <laughs> yeah. Like oh my god, I'm still yeah. human. I detritus. will still make totally offensive jokes. Um. Anyways, yeah. anyway, but you I've, still have your interests. Yes, exactly. You still exactly. have your hobbies. I still love video games. Um, yeah. I mean, I for still, fuck's sakes, you started a YouTube channel like shortly before this and have only ramped it up since then yeah like, not true. only have you uh, taken was, on more familial actually, responsibility we started it after we found out we were pregnant yeah yeah so because i kind of like anyways we'll get into that later but sure. I'll, I'll talk about legacy. that later but um kind of yeah a little bit but oh yeah okay i'm finding that my friends are mm. treating me like i'm different like they're like oh you're a dad you you don't have time for this shit I, and like you, you won't get invited to stuff yeah if some friends are going people out, will assume for yeah. you right they'll be like, oh you're okay. a dad you don't have time like Fuck, I could big time. I will like, yeah. I would chime love to. in on this one. Okay. Because I'm one of your friends. Yes. The only time I ever think that is when plans are spontaneous. So if yes. it's something the day of, I will assume it's probably yeah, not. Yeah, it, it's, it's probably less likely kids, that... It's probably less likely and like, I just don't, I just don't bother. Well, I want to jump... If it's something planned a, like a, more ahead, I will always try to include yeah. people with kids. But I'll, uh, let me jump in on the, the spontaneity no. element. Yes, Tom. Having a child means you're constantly your like your life is spontaneous spontaneity spontaneous like, huh. yeah your life is spontaneous <laughs> yeah. you, you, you basically uh maybe they're having a good day maybe they're not having a good day if like if finn is having a fucking great day and he's super easy going and like lando sends me a text and is like he's he's great for it because if he's like hey what are you doing this afternoon i've got the afternoon off and it's and it's like already noon and he's right. saying what are you doing in an hour like he still asks that, which mm-hmm. is great. I really appreciate that. He's one of the few people who still does it because uh-huh. it might be a good day. And but if somebody's like, "Hey, what are you doing three weeks from now?" I'd be like, "I don't have any plans, but we'll see what the day brings." Right, right, right. Because I will still have to cancel those plans. And I think like it, it if yeah. if if Finn's having a shitty day or if Melanie's like got a migraine or something, it's like, nope, sorry, I gotta stay home. And like I get it, I have to cancel plans a lot. I, or I have to change plans a lot because the circumstances of, of, of having a family and everything and uh, like it means sometimes I just got to take care of shit. Yeah. I think that's the thing we... is like, don't stop asking. Don't yeah, stop. No, asking. No, 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 never. And that's, it's a really good point to bring up to people who have friends that have kids. <laughs> fucking include them still. You know? Yeah. I mean, just the worst we can guy, say is no. Just send a goddamn <laughs> message. Because, or we're busy. Yeah. Because you, you're not different. And I know this from hanging out with both of you. Yeah. You're still the same fun people. You have you have a kid. That's that's a change. Yeah. But now we just have an extra fun person. Yeah. And I think <laughs> I think there's like, I think when I came over and saw Zach for the first time, I was trying to filter or like tone it down a bit. And you were even just like, no, 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 fuck it. And I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until I, he starts, until he starts good, parroting you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you just let the fucks fly. Yeah, but like it was, it's <laughs> refreshing to see that because you don't always. Sometimes you'll have friends that people have kids. think you instantly change into a different person, and, and you, you don't. Don't not at all. It's and just, the fact just that because just because you have a kid does not mean you've grown up. It's just yeah. what you yeah, might I'm, see on social media might be different. Like in other words, if I have friends with kids that move away and. And then all I'm seeing of them is social media kids, pictures of their kids. Yeah. Then I it's skewing my perception. Whereas if you're a, if if being a parent is a part of your life and you're talking about it, fucking a. But if you're talking about other stuff too, I still know like that's still my friend that yeah. I can that I can message about and this I think random that's topic. Kind you know of like I mean? an over reliance on social media, which is oh, like man, today's it's... existence. Basically, yeah, for sure. You like, are who you are on the internet, and no one else. I am so so, so proud of my family and so proud of, of everything that Finn does. Yeah, my Instagram is like since Finn's been born, it's mostly pictures of Finn. 
It's because he's so, right there. So he's so he's right you. there, and he's always doing something <laughs> super fucking cute. I haven't posted a picture of myself. Like, I haven't taken yeah. a selfie. I haven't <laughs> taken a selfie since Finn was born. Like, I have, right. but it's Zach with me. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. If it is, it's because yeah. there's a baby in the picture. Exactly. And it's mine. Yeah. Uh, so I get that. I yeah. get that that happens. But then, uh, yeah, if people stop asking you because they think, oh, he's a dad, he must be busy or whatever, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's it does. How, that's, that's how people problem. become all about their kids and all they ever talk about is their kids because they stopped getting exposed to other adults. They stopped being asked out by their friends and everything. Yep. Now, that's true for us. There are some people who definitely, there uh, is a switch. Themselves. Yes. That yeah, who uh, they have a kid and automatically they've seen like, oh, this is what my life is supposed to be all about now. So I won't talk about anything else and I won't live or breathe anything else. It's a hundred percent talking about my kids. Yeah. And people go, oh my god, okay, like that's, I get it, but man, like, that's like unfortunate we're not all about that. Yeah. We know you love your kid. We wouldn't ask you to change, but fuck, that's boring. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's the yeah, hundred percent. There needs to be a level of still relating because yeah, yeah. because otherwise, like. Me not having any experience with kids, like I can't talk about puke. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like or poop. I don't know. I mean, I don't typically. I, I don't even know how to change a diaper. But like, yeah. you know, if it's easy. If there's another element of the friendship that's still there, then then I can learn about your guys' life that's different mm-hmm. from mine, and yeah. it's actually a cool thing. It's, it's true. We'll bring up a couple else. things. We'll it, bring up like a couple things. Like 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 yeah. Zach did this hilarious thing. Like he got a fucking raging heart on the other day. That was hilarious. <laughs> we, need to, we need to talk about that. Well, yeah, all right. I don't think there's, there's no smooth transition in the baby boners, by the way. No, okay. It just needs to come out and happen. This is something I did not know, and now I do know, and I wasn't prepared for it. And babies can get boners. And I was shocked. I didn't know what to do with it. He started playing with it. And I was like, I was like, really? yes. Well, well they mean, discover it. They, I mean, they're, they're like, like, whoa, what's he this? He wasn't like whacking off, but he was like, he doesn't know how to do that Smacking yet. around, like tugging at his scrot and like yep. playing with it. And I couldn't get the diaper back on because I was like, you're pinching a, you're pitching a ten here, buddy. I can't. Oh, I can't get this shit down. God. Was this oh, so? Was this like his first? Was this just like recently? I don't know if it was like, his first, but it was like the first, first one for I saw. you. Yeah, it, it was my first Zach's boner. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's going in the scrapbook. Dad, Daddy's first that's, son boner. That's a good children's book title. Oh God, yeah. Because um, I haven't not I, ready for. I it. have no. not had that experience yet with Finn, but I've been like mentally preparing myself for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, please, please stop, buddy. And and this, don't body shame him. Yeah. Let him play with himself. And I was like, in front of his parents? I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to set this precedent. Here. It's a weird, just okay yeah. to just whack off in front of your parents. There like, you go. There's like a then. few steps between here and there. <laughs> yeah, I, guess. I know. I know. I know. Uh, yeah. uh, I forget Damn, my original point. Baby yeah. boners. Oh, it was about. Um, oh shit. Fuck. What was it? We were talking about like dads not being invited to stuff, oh, and yeah. then somehow I got into. A baby oh, that you isolate yourself and you become all about. Your family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I'll bring up like an interesting tidbit like that. Like but this I, happened usually, in my life. But I love that. But usually, the rest of my about. life, the rest of my life is is so focused on baby and yeah. and, and dadding that I, when I'm with friends, I'd like to, I'd like to not talk about it just as much as they'd like to not hear about it. Right. Yeah. Like I, I would like to talk about Star Wars or yeah. video games or whatever. And right. that's true, not just of parenting. Like you got to think about it as like if you've got. I have a coworker, great guy. Uh, he's kind of an asshole, but you get used to him. Kind of great guy. Of I, I actually, I really like him. He's yeah. a great dude. He has like basically one interest, and it's Eve Online. <laughs> so yeah, is so he gonna get it, that twenty seven thousand dollar pack? They probably. just released that thing where it gives you every ship in the game for twenty seven thousand dollars. Jesus Christ! I yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. But like, but he, that's this has been his life. The game's been around a long time. He's invested like thousands of hours into it he loves that game like if he's at you can talk to him about work stuff yeah and that's great that'll keep you busy because work changes but if you run out of work stuff to talk about <laughs> it's eve online Back to eve that sucks that's <laughs> yeah. shitty there's it's no the room it's the same as there's it's... no room for conversation there yeah. if if the if the person you're talking to has that one thing in their life and that's all they talk about that's shitty yeah it is yeah. It doesn't need to be that way for parents. No. And I think people assume that of their parents. Do like, you think it doesn't ha- assume of their friends who become parents that they're like that's all they're that's all they're going to want to talk about. And that's not true. That's not true at all. It is true for some people. Yeah. But not some people think, do put themselves into that role. I but think it not skews all. more. I think it also skews a little bit harder to the moms than the dads. Maybe. I feel yeah. like the moms they really enjoy talking about it and compare, especially talking from mom to mom. And they're heavily immersed in it too. Yeah. Because they, all the family is asking the mom. talking about their baby, holy fuck. 
That's yeah. never good. That's a conversation that's never going to stop. Dads have the advantage of not being the target of those conversations. That's it's true. true. It's true. Because my even my family. So Melanie and I aren't married yet. We're getting married this summer in a few weeks. Ding ding. Yeah. Ding ding. Uh, we uh, so so my family hasn't. My family. My family has only been really introduced to Melanie since. Finn has been born. Right. My extended family and everything, all my aunts and 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 through her, fucking amazing. I had a lot of great women. Well, guess she's me. sticking around. And the <laughs> yes, right, she's fully immersed now because my my extended family, my aunts and and even like like my, my father and his wife, like they didn't really know Melanie beforehand. Yeah. And they didn't like they phoned like they phoned me to say congratulations and everything. But when it came to showing Finn off, they're not talking to me. Right. They're not asking me how it's Finn's true. doing. It's true. They're not asking me about Finn's milestones and that kind of thing. They're uh-huh. asking Melanie. That's kind of sad. They're asking about. the mom, even though they know me better. It's not that sad because it's, still, it's not sad because no, it's actually good. I think because again, the it like the mom's life is to, swallowed up so yeah. much more than the dad's life. It delegates so, those to the to the to the strengths of exactly the exactly. If if that's all you know then this is the only conversation you could really be a part of at this time. So it yeah. feels nice to be included. Because yeah. if we start talking about basically anything else, and, and you're so swamped with being a mom, you might feel unincluded. So the fact that you're being included could be helpful. I mean, right. you, you could you could look at it from 20 different angles and oh, be like, yeah. no, that's fucking insulting. The mm-hmm. father should be asked just the same questions. I mean, he yeah. very well could be. But, th- I, I mean, I think... I do think moms like to talk about their kids more than dads. But... At the same time, you still got to treat them like they were before. Yeah. Because yeah. they are still the people they were before. Oh, 100%. Um, they've just had more responsibility. And sometimes I think it lies on the friends. It does. I, because absolutely. I, think, I think that there's this, I think that there is a, maybe, I don't know if stigma is the right word, but I think sometimes when you are like a single, like say you're the same age as somebody and you're single and you don't have kids and then your friend gets married and has kids. There's an attitude of like, oh, well, well, they're growing up and I'm still a piece of garment. Trust like, me. What? So like, it's almost like we put ourselves down a peg yeah. because we think what you're doing is so much like better. Oops. Like there is Whoa. a, there is a divide <laughs> there of where your life journey is at. But then I think we make it bigger by, by assuming that making assumptions. Now our lives, now your life is so different than mine. Like, well, wait, I guess, I guess it's always the grass is greener, right? Because trust totally me, true. like, trust me, parents are also looking the other way and getting a bit jealous. Like, oh my God, you get to Aww. sleep whenever the fuck you want. Yeah, that's true. Damn. It Shit. really, yeah. really is. Yep. You, you like your money is only going to you and no one else. Like yeah. you can like, you can do whatever you want. Damn, that's fucking awesome. But like. Yeah. It, it it goes both ways and no one's more important or less important no than the other. Yeah. It, it's just the parents have a literal life depending yeah. on them and that's that that's surely like it takes more responsibility it becomes obviously. a pro- that like that's okay this is my number one priority. Yeah. Just because it's my number one priority doesn't mean it's my only. Well, yeah, priority. exactly. Yeah, that's a great yes. way to say it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, because it just might take a little more planning for you to do things. Yeah, when Ben things. when Ben was talking about how he likes the spontaneous versus the planned, I I feel that's where we differ. I like the planned better yeah. than the spontaneous. Mm-hmm. I don't I like cuz for me um if I do have spare time and someone spontaneously asks me, I'm more likely to just say fucking no because yeah. It, to me, it's not spontaneously free time. It's holy shit! I finally have some free time like moment, and to, I would like that yeah. to myself. So when someone asks me, like, so that that's, that's understandable. Uh, that, that's not to say I do that all the time. Right. If it, during the weeknights, definitely, I would probably be like hard no. But right, if it's the weekend, like it's like a date like today, and someone's like, "Hey, what are you up to?" I'll be like, "Hey, I can fucking go." And then if it's even if it's something Zach could be included in or something like that. Oh, cool! Like I mean, that's something. Run to the dog park too. or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, just maybe do different things. Yep. Like, but I, I like I like to have it planned because me and Sandra we have like um like a shared marital calendar, which I was oh, telling you about. Yes. Where, um, the shared Google, which cal. is fucking gold. I like, love it. I'm gonna implement that. In yeah. Our lives. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, it is because then we know when she's busy, when I'm busy, or when we're both busy or whatever. Um, because we're very cool about like. You go out, I'll stay. You go out, I'll stay. We don't get butthurt about it or anything like sure, that. Of course. <clears throat> Love it. Love that about both of you, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Like just like yesterday or er, no. Uh, what day is it? Today? Yeah, Thursday. She, she went out. <laughs> what she was year like, is it? I'm going out to dinner with Amy. That cool. I was like, fuck yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I'll just chill here. It doesn't matter. Man, I sweat. Um, 
Oh, that being said, we do have to like find time to go out with just the two of us. Date nights. That that requires a babysitter. So that requires more planning than you would spontaneously like to. But that's the nature of being parents and um spouses, I guess. Yeah. Is yeah. that your romance gets a lot more structured. <laughs> I was gonna my next question was It kinda has to. I mean it you does. can still do some spontaneous stuff, but like it's hard for the most part, again, and Sandra's the same way. She I don't think she'd like be like, Okay, let's spontaneously do this. She'd be like I won't go to fuck the bed. I don't want right. to do that shit. Like yeah. self care comes. It's almost like self care should come first and then date night. Maybe self care being like relaxation. Yeah, a moment to like unwind and like. Well, relax. that's the thing. If you plan it, then you can you know plan for it. You can that's prepare true. for it. You can make sure you are well rested and you're in a good headspace when it comes. Um, and that's not to say if you had a shit day that you can't cancel. That's fine. Your your better all fucking half humans. Will, yeah, yeah, exactly. Your oh better God, half will yes. understand. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not a big deal. In fact, you could even like just change your plans. Like, okay, well, we'll just stay home and I don't know, watch Ali Wong. Oh. <gasps> she's great. She's great. <laughs> she's yeah, okay. She's okay. I liked her first one better, but yeah, the second one was still good. Um, Baby Cobra. I was gonna ask how your relationship with your spouses has changed since kids. Uh, it, no, I, I'll jump in on this. Oh, Yo, you go right ahead. They, uh, I like the finger uh, point. <laughs> Objection! Objection! Yeah, exactly. Uh, because there's more responsibilities introduced, there's more there's more handoff time. I think. Yes. You like to to Jesse's point about oh, wait, like handoff or hands off. <laughs> <laughs> there's hand off both there's there, both like, there's both there, there is both I mean, but in all seriousness like it's yeah you you've got you've got a human being to take care of so instead of it just being the two of you and you're taking care of each other all the time your relationship becomes you're both working to take care of this third person it's like a team effort it is a team effort and sometimes it's like okay it's like i'm doing this like it's, like your calendar it's not necessarily thing. a simultaneous team effort right right no, only one of you can really deal with the baby at a time exactly if you got four hands in his face is not going to help him any like, more than you, two you still have all your life responsibilities so it's a lot less likely that we're both going to go like okay it's sunday let's let's clean the house you're like you're going to do the floors i'll do the bathroom like love it that it that doesn't happen anymore it's like, hey, I want to clean the bathroom. Here's Finn. Yeah. Right. And Take or like, or like, hey, I'm going. Like, I'm going out today. Can like, I'll be out for a couple hours. Are you okay to watch Finn for that? Yeah, like Sandra, like, she no needs a new phone. She's like, I gotta go to Best Buy. I can't take fucking Zach. Here yeah. you go. I'm going to get a new phone. That, yep. That's it. That's it. I got to go run some errands and it'll take me twice as long if I have to take the baby. Can you keep the baby? Like, can you stay home tonight and take care of the baby? Yeah. Your so, your time used to when beforehand your relationship was your time and your partner's time were like if it was a it was Venn, a Venn if, diagram if it was a Venn diagram there were little There's tiny a... crescent moons at either side Aww. where they didn't cross over yeah exactly your time was primarily together mm-hmm. that those circles move a little further and further apart the more you need to accommodate the other person's plans because now you've got a third circle in there who requires to who requires to be fully covered right. by one or the other yeah he needs, to all, he yeah. needs no uh, over or he needs no outer lap yeah there's no time that <laughs> where it's like well finn needs some time to himself <laughs> yeah <laughs> like baby needs some yeah he's like baby needs give him a little time. space today nope. no alone time for baby yeah for sure here's some like he's Nap. gonna read some tolstoy this afternoon <laughs> yeah. so give him a cup of tea and put him by the window <laughs> so like he he needs to be a hundred percent covered by Fine. one or Can the you other. Pass so, me the livre. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like so he's gonna yeah. So your time together with just the two of you becomes a lot more limited. Mm-hmm. And so in terms of spontaneity for like a sexual relationship with your partner and everything, that tends to start falling by the wayside. And you do have to plan your romance. You do yeah. have to plan your time yep, together sure. a bit more. And I, like, I grew up as an only child. I have a, um, my, uh, I say I grew up as an only child because I do also have a half sister and I have two stepsisters and a stepbrother. Oh, cool. So my parents, my parents separated when I was very young and then they each remarried. So I have a blended family. I had two, I had two very great and except and incredibly different examples of what a dad is Mm. and what a dad does yeah um and uh and and both had like their merits just very different they're very different people so i have my stepdad and my mom who i lived with and i have my my father and his wife who i did not live with but i did spend a lot of time with and um fuck i forget where i was going (laughs) (laughs) Uh, a lot today. Spon- spontaneous <laughs> romance 
Yeah, I don't know how I got to that. Part. Yeah, me either. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know where you were going there. I Family. don't know where I was going either. <laughs> that makes okay. I'll interject. Yeah, you, please you, do. You come please back. do. I'll think so. That. Dad brains. Yeah. So your family's very bit. Mine's the same way. Like, mm. okay, my family structure is. Oh, okay. oh my god, so, your family structure. <laughs> here, here's the weird thing about my family. So my parents split, like when I was like twelve, and then they remarried, a split couple. Do you know what I'm? You know where I'm going with this, right? So they're they're Life swap. They're two couples. Yes. Each divorced, trade places. Yes. Wait. Remarried. Yes. They swapped. Yeah. Well, not they didn't like join a community and swapped. It just happened. <laughs> and like it, it wasn't like a. It wasn't like, like a fet life. Yeah. Meetup. It, it wasn't like a key party gone permanent. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a. Yeah. It just happened that way. And then so I have the same stepsisters on either side. So the four of us are kind of like a unit in that way. You figured out what you're going to go with. Okay. I do. I do. I, let me finish my Yeah, you finish your okay. <laughs> So, okay. So before I knew that happened, when 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 my, my mom and my dad split, it was fucking rough. Like, they fucking hated each other. There was custody battles. There was lawyer. There was a nightmare. Um, so, which forced me to, like, grow up real quick. So, I was, like... You're an adult the situation the very house. fast. Very fast. I was yeah. the man of the Ooh. house, right? Looking after, like, my mom and my little brother. Um, How old were you? Twelve. I think. No, you said that already. Maybe. Yes, I young. did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's young and it's not. It's like right into puberty, basically. Um, so yeah. both I was like physically and mentally becoming a man. <laughs> <laughs> he also um, had his uh, bar mitzvah around the same time. So No, but my penis did when I was born. <laughs> Anyways, wait, you don't do it at the bar mitzvah. <laughs> that, would, that, would be a, that would be a horrific party trick. Oh You're God. becoming a man now. <laughs> <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> <laughs> and here's my tip. <laughs> Uh, oh anyways, so, so when I, when I turned 18, like, I was like, I'm fucking done with this shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm going out and I'm just, I'm not coming back. Right. Like when I was done high school, I was like, I'm, I'm moving to Halifax and I'm moving. And that's what I did. And then like, I've just become like, I've always relied on myself for the most part. I mean, I still rely on my parents for some stuff, but for the most part, I, it, since that time, I was like, okay, if I want to get shit done, I have to do it. You're very self-sufficient. Yeah, 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 very, yeah, very early. So that that was instilling me. Like, people have called me the dad of the group many times. Because I'm the one who, like, organizes it and makes the rules and, like, sets up the times. I'm You're like, okay, guys, we have to keep everything fair. Like, yeah. don't don't disinclude anyone. Like, yeah. like um... I love that. Okay, Ben, you can go back to your point because okay, yeah, I've lost it. mine. <laughs> I, I think I we were talking about our family structures and what makes us a, what makes us a dad or what the examples of a dad. And I I, I want I hundred percent want to go back to that. But my what I was getting at was um, even though I had these siblings, they were elsewhere. I had these siblings. My my stepdad, he was he had been married previously. He had three adult children mm. when my mom married my stepdad. He had adult children. Yeah, like oh. his, his children were grown oh, right. and. and got, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, that must have hurt. Isn't that weird? <laughs> <laughs> Full fledged adults. <laughs> Father, right pass up. me the Libra. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so so I grew up as an only child. We were talking about at the at, when I lost my train of thought. We were talking about uh, our Venn diagrams as partners, yeah. where, right. where our circles yeah, yeah, yeah. overlap yeah. and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. and self care and so on and so on. That's so the, up. The, the time that we were the, <laughs> the, the times that we were talking about that we have to plan to give each other time as well. Mm. As growing up as an only child, I every day had my time to myself. Ah. Every day I grew up with my quiet time and I love to draw and I love to play with Lego. So I always had my quiet time where I was being creative and constructive and I was right. pouring my time into something that was just Yours. silent and me. Yeah. Ooh. And as an adult, like growing up, I like I still need that. Yeah. Which is what led we were talking about sleep patterns earlier. So we're gonna tie we're wrapping it all back in. It's all they, coming back in. Uh, my sleep <laughs> patterns became a I'm I'm very much a night owl because it's quiet time. Mm. It's time when as as you grow up, you get roommates. That's the time when you get your house to yourself. Yeah. It's the time when you can sit quietly and Wife do whatever and you asleep. want to do that. People aren't messaging you because they're sleeping. Exactly. So mm -hmm. you get you if you have that built in quiet time by staying up late. Right. And that's how I became a night owl as well is because I wanted that time to myself. Uh, yeah, I'm the it, same way and that's what kills me that I can't do it as much anymore. It's tough. Because yeah, you know I like so I got to get up at 6 a.m. so bullshit. Yeah, it like, sucks so like, ass. Uh, like I so you're not choosing to be more responsible. Your life situation is like if I 
don't change my behavior, I'm just probably going to waste away too much. That's my biggest yeah. dilemma when I choose to go to bed. I'm like, okay, I'm really enjoying just having time to myself, like mm-hmm. playing video. I like to have like if you, like I have three computer screens. I need like yeah, I need to like read something here, watch something here, and play something here. Yeah, that, you got that's ultimate it. stimulus. I need I need play what because. I I don't have time to do them all separately. Yep, I gotta do, do them all, all at once. once. Yeah. So I've I've got to get <laughs> my reading done. I got to catch up on my my YouTube and Netflix, and I've got to like play my video games. Yeah. So, uh, so it's like, fuck. I do I want to go to bed because yeah, that's the thing. It's and that's such just a hard doing decision. the things that you want to do for you by yourself. I know that's the thing. It's like this is the only time I really can because wife and baby are asleep. I mean. No one's pressuring me to do anything. I can do whatever I want, but fuck, I'm not getting tired. Yeah, and it's, it's like, like, and then, and then you need to make that sacrifice of if I do stay up and do these things, I'm gonna be a piece of shit tomorrow. Exactly, yeah. and then you so, start like, you weighing to... the pros and cons, and you're like, God damn. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's what, yeah, anyway, that's where I was. That's what I was thinking about with like the blended family thing and, and everything. It's like, yeah. So I was an only child. I need to. I absolutely have to have that quiet time to myself, or I start getting shitty. Yeah. Like if Grumpy. I don't get that day over day, if I don't have some quiet time where people aren't like people from work aren't harassing me to try and for, to solve their problems, and it, where like I don't have a tiny human relying on me to, for the, all of their stuff, and then. Like, it sounds like I'm complaining, but I'm, no, I'm not. No, no. These are, this is all just a different part of my life now. And and then it's incredibly important to still make time for you and your partner. Oh, my God. So yeah. we have that time together. and but, but then Melanie understands this, that then we also have our time apart. Where Finn's in bed and Melanie's upstairs watching a documentary on TV and I'm downstairs watching a Let's Play or I'm playing Terraria or doing something. Like we then we know that we give each other that space, and she knows that that's very important to me. Yeah, oh, it's a balancing so act. It is. Important. You really have to like carefully. Well, not carefully, but I mean, kinda. You have to make sure. Okay, I'm taking a lot of time to myself lately. Probably should make some time for the wife, or give her some free time. Um, and I think like the women in our life, they're awesome. And if we ever like requested, like, hey. I've had a fucking shit week. I know Sandra have done this, and I'm like, I like, I know I I'm gonna be day. home. I know you guys are gonna be home. I don't want anyone downstairs. I, I'd like to just chill, chill out. out and just have some time to myself. And she's like, totally cool, totally cool. Decompression. And usually, what? It's like a decompression. 100%. It is. It is yeah. because, like, my job. I won't mention what it is or where it is, but it's fucking stressful, especially yeah. lately. It's it's getting up there in the stress levels, like yeah. blood pressure, high levels <sighs> of stress, yeah. but. Um, it's getting better, but anyways, so a couple of times in the past few months, I've just been like, I need to not, and it doesn't mean I don't want to hang out with you. It doesn't mean I love you guys any less. It just means my brain can't handle any more yeah, <laughs> stimulus, stimulus. Yeah. from any source. So I just need some time and and that's fine. And she's like, cool, cool. Uh, usually we'll like cut a deal. Like if I give you this, you take the monitor and make sure Zach's okay through the night so I can have a full night's sleep. I'm like, fucking deal. And that's 100% important because yes. as much as your brain needs some time where it just like <laughs> stops swelling and it yes. just shrinks down a little bit, your partner is also a human being who's going to need that time in return. Yeah, 100%. So you're not, it's not like you're always making deals with like, oh, but then you have to do like, uh, like I'll do this. But then like, but like, you know, it's a give and take that you, that you want to give each other because you know, they're in the same boat as you. Yeah. Because if you're not a shitty person. Yes, exactly. That's that's what makes a good partner. If you're just asking for things and not offering, go fuck yourself. Yeah. And it's like, um, (laughs) that's the thing. Um, you, you, you know, you can tell. I mean, if you're an observant person, I know that like, Like, sometimes I can't tell. And I'm like, oh, if you were feeling that way, you probably just should have used the actual words and told me. Right. But sometimes you definitely can. Like, because yeah. um, I find that for Sandra, at least, if I'm having a shitty day and she's having a shitty day, she will feel guilty if she doesn't take some of it off her plate, even though I can tell she's also having a shitty day. Right. So it gets into the, like this, like, fucking rock in a hard place situation where oh, you're like sucks. we're both just so done with today but yep. Zach's being a fucking maniac so which one of us gets to bite e- the bullet yeah oh. so sometimes someone just has to and some of the times you really fucking don't want to yeah um and that's kind of that those are usually the points of contention that get brought up where it's just like hey I know you had a shitty day, but so did fucking I. And your shitty day is not any shittier than mine. Yeah. So, yeah. That's the challenge. We're in it together. That's the challenge yeah. is not making it a competition. The challenge no. is, is making sure that you don't propose that in a way that would be like, yeah, but I had this happen today. Oh, yeah? Well, my day had this that's happen. That's what I always it's say. I always yeah. say never, ever, ever keep score. Ever. Never. Just you can't. Keep score is 
a fucking that is poison to any relationship. Yeah, if you so keep score, true. you can't be like, "But I got up early yesterday morning." Like it just it can't happen. You do have to make some deals for sure, but yeah. you it's you can't be like, "But I did it yesterday." You know, like there can't be a tally. You're a hundred percent right. <sighs> to a, to an extent, if someone you still is try really, to balance it, if someone is really getting shit on, yeah, for consecutive amounts of days, I I wouldn't blame either side to br- bring yeah. it up and be like, "Hey, if listen, I've been, out- I've been dealing with this shit for four days." Yeah. Like, yeah, I'd like a break, please. Like, yeah. that's OK for sure. But that's the thing. You've got to be cognizant enough to kind of not let it get to that point yeah. or at least try not to let it get to that point. And it's up because you're like, like, fuck. You're, yeah. Like, OK, so I have a very stressful job as well. There, I'm doing one guy left on stress leave from the oh, position because he couldn't do it. And the uh, and the the assistant to that guy left on uh, paternity leave. Ouch. <laughs> so they had nobody. And they said, hey, Ben, can you do this? And I was like. Well, let's find out. Uh, <laughs> Not going to guarantee that I can, but let's just see how yeah, this happens. let's see how it goes. Uh, they pro- It was hilarious because they proposed it as like, this is a great opportunity for you. And I'm like, no, you're <laughs> fucked and I'm helping you. It's a great opportunity to pick up all the work that we have no one to work yeah, like, is, wow, Here's a great learning. great career opportunity, good learning experience and everything. And I was like, exposure. Do let you me, want some exposure? Let me reframe oh this gosh. for you. Yeah, like. I know that, like, yes, it is a great opportunity. I know that, yes, this will be a good experience that I can take to the next position. But <laughs> also, but also, I know that you're in a bad, bad way, and I can help you, and I'm willing to do that. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I can't let my employer think I'm doing them a favor because, holy shit, I am absolutely doing them a favor. Like, yeah. I, I can't let them think that they're doing me a favor, I should say. Yeah, exactly. Because I am 100% <laughs> doing, doing them. them a favor. My work so, isn't even, like, shy about hiding it. They're like, we need your help. We're fucked. We're fucked. <laughs> like, I, I, I wish it was that upfront. <laughs> but so, so I have some really long, stressful days, and then Melanie, so then Melanie gets to be home alone with Finn, and if he's having a tough day, and and yeah. he's upset and she's home alone with him and she's the only person taking care of them and Melanie gets migraines. So maybe she's home alone with a migraine taking care of a baby who's having a fucking shitty day and I come home, I've been at work also but it's, but, sh- but from her perspective, she's been alone all day and I've been out with adults. Being alone at home with a baby all day is fucking work. It is work. What anyone says, yeah. you cannot stop for a fucking second unless yeah. they're napping in which case that's like your company mandated lunch break essentially wow, yeah. like yeah. you can't stop there's no stop like if you sit and watch tv your kid's gonna go run off and grab something um it's constant attention it, it yeah. is constant and one. not a lot of people get that <laughs> coming back to ali wong she had that joke where like when i heard that i was gonna be off work for a <laughs> year after having this baby yeah. they didn't fucking tell me it was a job like yeah. <laughs> It's so, yeah. it, it is. And sometimes, in a lot of ways, it's more stressful sometimes yeah. than your actual job. At least with... Because you're on call 24-7. Yeah. That phone and never stops ringing. it's a living ringing. being. It's not like yeah. a project Especially like, or like a... I don't know yeah. what other babies are like, but my baby, Zach, holy fuck, he's got way too much energy. He has, well, he's <laughs> he your does, child. He, he your is child. hyperactive, and he wants everything. He goes, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> like, I'm going to grab this shit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slap the dog. I'm going to like... Put, like pull everything off of a table that's just barely out of my reach because I want to know what's up there and then crush my head with it. Like, <laughs> oh my it's, god! So so Sandra works now that she's back to work. It's even it, it, it escalates even more, right? Because when she was at home, she understood. Okay, this is my job. But right. yeah. Jesse goes out and works. I stay home with the baby. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Now she's doing both, right? So he goes to daycare two days a week, but every second Sunday. She works. So now I have a full day every couple weeks. I know that's like all the moms are out there and like, fucking deal with it. Yeah, you got a, <laughs> you got a whole oh, one day. That, oh, you got one day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's different. It's difficult because I'm not used to it. I don't like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like eat food. Can't you open the fridge, man? Like get over there. Yeah, because like, you come home from work and like, so your shift starts. You you finish or you finish work. You come home, then your shift starts. I know. And now know. you're in charge of the baby, but you're in charge of the baby for two and a half hours, and yeah. then it's bedtime. Baby goes to bed, and then you figure out what the rest of your evening is. Two and a half hours a day, five days a week, is not the same as twenty four hours one no. day. No, yeah. but see, that's the thing, and that's 
that's the bouncing art, right? You can't you can't say one's worse than the other because no. if you do, you're keeping score, and if you keep score, then there's resentment. There's, there's, somebody's going to resent resentment. Somebody. You don't and there's that. a rift, and that's real bad. Yep, you, you that's don't a, want any of that. It's a very intelligent. Sometimes, sometimes there's like thoughts like that, but mm. as long as you you're just like you can't you vocalize just, it. No, well, definitely not. But nope. I mean, <laughs> not, I'm not even saying vocalize it, but I'm not. I'm saying like you don't even push it to your like permanent memory. It's just like a fleeting thought. Like like nope, holy fuck, get, get that shit um, out of my head. That, that being said, if it's repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating, then you got a problem. But it hasn't been that way for us anyway. Mm. But, That's good. Yeah. Um, so on oh, Sundays when I take care of Zach, I, I like it. I, I do like hanging with him. But holy shit, sometimes I find it's stress, more stressful than my actual job. I'm just like, Hoop! because like in my actual job, yes, it's stressful, but we're I'm dealing with all adult people. Yeah. yeah. But you can communicate a child, knowing that you don't married. reason with a child. Yeah. You can't. You can't use logic with a child. They're completely unpredictable. One thing that makes them happy five minutes from now is going to make them pissed It's off. a totally different set of skills. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Liam Neeson. I was well, just thinking that. I was just thinking totally that. I have skills. a very specific set of skills. But it's true. Baby like, rearing is not one of these you're, skills. You're, you're, <laughs> you're busy at work, but it's in your skill set. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you're like, here's my skill set. that I'm like, I'm taking care of this. I know how to do it. It's stressful, but I know how to do it. You're not as practiced because you're doing that five days yes. a week. You're not as practiced with this other skill set. And so it is a little bit more difficult. You do have the benefit of, I get a whole day with my kid. Oh. Yeah. I get, I get, I, I work long days and it, I have a job that is like, well, you're not done. So keep working. Uh-huh. And so there are stretches during the week on weekdays where I don't really see Finn for like a couple days sometimes. Aww. Yeah. And it's shitty. Yeah. It sucks ass like, because then I'm like, well, thank God we've at least got the like infrared monitors now because like, <laughs> I can, I, at least I could pick up a little tablet and, <laughs> and press the button and go, there he is. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I, I'm I, looking at him. I have technology. a Neopet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, pretty it's much like, it's oh a Tamagotchi. I have a Tamagotchi. Like start feeding him. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, wash away the poop. Wash away the poop. <laughs> there it is. I, so, so yeah. So episode. when I get that, when, when I'm giving Melanie her break, basically, when I was like, here's your one day off and it doesn't even always work out to that because mm. you've got a life and things get busy and family wants to visit and blah blah yeah. blah 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 oh, yeah. or it's like well I like my job didn't let me mow the lawn anytime this week so Saturday is me out doing yard work like so when you give your partner that one day a week it's it's a gift but it's also a challenging one because it's not a skill set you've been practicing yeah for six days a week no. like mom has right it's true Damn. and like, yeah, there's just a lot like free time. Like as I've gotten into dadhood, the number one, and this was, this has changed since I've been like a teen or a young adult. Um, the number one most valuable resource is time. Oh yeah. Time yeah, yeah, yeah. is fucking gold. I don't give a shit about money. I, yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. as long as I have enough money to cover my, my expenses, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm com- We're definitely comfortable. That's great. But time man there's just no Price. time you, there's no amount of money that can buy you that time unless you get no, a nanny unless you get, then, a, you get a stupid amount of money and get a nanny <laughs> but but yeah. then there's the like then there's kind of like the emotional cost then you, of like then you lose time I'm with paying your son. I'm paying somebody to not spend time with my own family and exactly that's kind of shitty too yes what's your guys' favorite time with your sons our favorite activity. I know this know. is going to sound... Our favorite bonding. Saunders going to fucking hate this. <laughs> Uh-oh. But... I'm excited. When what I'm putting it? Zach to bed, we play this game, and I know she hates it, but, like, when he's he hates getting his jammies on going to bed, so he starts, like, getting real, like, fucking giggly, and he's like... <laughs> when, I'm like when I'm like, when I'm like, taking his diaper off and, like, putting the diaper on and putting his jammies on, he'll just jump up and then just run away and just go... <laughs> and then, like... <laughs> I wish people could have seen what Jesse just did. And then he like jumps up on the bed and occasionally he'll look back at me and go like, <laughs> like as if I'm chasing him. And then yeah. I'll, I'll, oh, I let him get away like half the time so I can see it. And I'm like, I'm like, wait, where's Zach? And he'll be like, oh, and then I'll, <laughs> and then I'll grab him and I'll start tickling his ribs. And he's like, <laughs> it's the best. And like the goof in oh, time. Yes. I love the goof off time. The goof off time is a hundred percent the best it's because you get to be, you get to be a silly asshole. <laughs> Yeah. Your kid is. You revert to a kid. Yeah, like oh, you get to I be. Love that. There is no responsibility that's more important in that moment because oh. they're laughing and having a good time. Yeah. You're laughing and having a good time. It's like, yeah, I know I sh- it should be quiet time because it's bedtime and mm. we're moving towards that. I, and like, I, I should be calming you down. But 
this is the little bit of time we're getting together to on a on a Wednesday. This is where my this is where me and Saunders philosophy differ. I think he should have that time where he just burns it all out at the last second yeah. and then crashes. Mm-hmm. But she's like, no, yeah. it's quiet time, quiet time. I'm like, you, you have like too much quiet up. time? He's still got it in there. So I like to yes. let him run around and like sometimes before bed I'll even take him to our, our, our bedroom and just slam him on the bed and like throw him up in the air and just drop him on the bed. Yeah, you're roughhousing. Yeah, man. oh yeah, roughhousing big time. I tickle him and grab his fat little thighs and pinch him and he's like, oh! <laughs> Chubby oh little fuck. My God. That's the best time. That's the best time. And That's then, amazing. and then, and like, it doesn't ever affect how well he goes to sleep. Like, even if I, if I'm like fucking with him and we're laughing, giggling, and throwing him around, once he's like in his jammies and I start feeding him, pff, dead. dead. He's out. Yeah. Out for like, the world. Because so, he's expelling the energy. Sandra doesn't like me to do that because it, she says, like, teaches him that, de- that bedtime is playtime. But. I don't care. This is where you, this is <laughs> there, where you differ. But. Yeah, there is yeah. that balance, you know? There is yeah, that like, kind of balance. I, I, I think it works great because he still, even after we just mess around, he still conks out just as hard, if yeah. not harder. Like yeah. Now, Finn's changing now because it, there was a there was a time, now Finn's like nine months now, so they're like it's only like in the past three weeks that he's been, that has changed from... Boy to a man. Well, that's right. <laughs> I mean, we did, you know, do the chop. No, we didn't. We didn't. He still has his force yet. But no, uh, wait till he's thirteen. Jesus, <laughs> that's right. Like a like a proper like person. Uh, so he's changed. Basically, we get him. We had the bedtime routine, and we were very like a lot of things. Ch- children crave structure, and it, I don't think it really matters what that structure is, what that schedule is. But children need to have structure. Mm-hmm. They crave it because if they don't have structure, if one day is is dramatically different from the next every day then they're they're cranky then they don't know how to take instructions I think, and it's and it becomes difficult so we have a bedtime routine that worked very well for us yeah. and it's changing now not because we're changing it but because Finn is growing and it's changing for him mm-hmm. so up until very recently we get him in his PJs we have a bottle ready one of us will be feeding we're very fortunate that both of us can be there for bedtime one of us will f- be feeding him while the other reads a story or two or three, depending on how awake he, he still is. But by the time, like, no matter what, by the time he gets, like, two-thirds of the way through that bottle, he is struggling to stay awake. His eyes are closed. <laughs> now, uh-huh. now, only in the past few weeks, he's finishing that bottle, and it looks like he's starting to conk out. The bottle's gone, and he gets that little suck of air at the end, and then he's like, all right, I'm ready. My, <laughs> got my, I got, like, my fifth wind of the day. Oh, I'm God ready to wind. go. Another bartender. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So he's like, so he wants to, at that point, instead of, like, falling asleep in your arms, he wants to stand up and, like, kick and, be, and, be and kick oh, and, like, look yeah, around yeah. and that kind of thing. And he's like, So fuck yeah. many times all Zach right. has uppercutted me with his head in the chin. Yeah. He'll just go, like, <laughs> <laughs> and just slam the bottom of my chin, and I just have to hope my tongue's not out. Finn likes to do like a chunk of it. Yeah, Finn likes to do like a standing push up where he's standing in your lap, he pushes away from you, looks at you, and and then he just collapses and headbutts you. (laughs) Yeah. And sometimes when Zach has a burp, he'll just mash his head off your chest and just go (laughs) doom, doom, doom. And he's just trying to get the burp out, but he's just going boom, boom, boom. Like, like, come on, yeah. Fuck, man. Come on. But no matter what, like, like, so he would fall asleep in our arms. We'd like gingerly lay him down in the bed. He would stay asleep. Sometimes in the process of laying him down, he'd wake up. He'd be awake for maybe five minutes. He'd fuss maybe a little bit, but it's, yeah. you could hear it's that kind of like winding down fussy that you're like, it's not real. You're going to go to sleep in a minute. You're too tired. Right. Now he's like pops back awake after he finishes his bottle. But now he's just awake when we put him to bed. Instead of being asleep in our arms, we'll lay him down in bed. And he's still awake, and he's kicking around, and he's having a good time. Now Finn does not have the same kind of energy that Zach does. Finn's a way Finn's way more relaxed. He more he's way more laid back. Yeah, yeah. And so we'll put him in bed, and we'll be like, "All right, cool." And here's a stuffed animal, and he'll just like play with that, chew on the bunny's ear or whatever, and then he falls asleep himself. Oh, he, he might the dream. Be, he might be awake in his crib for like 15 minutes, and you'll still hear him cooing and stuff in there. But he's not Aww. screaming his head off and that kind of thing. Oh so my that's God. changing. No. And we're getting more toward the like. But now I'm back awake and I want to play kind of thing. So I can see that change happening in him. Because Zach will just sit up in his crib and then stand up and then start grabbing everything around him and just start <laughs> screaming. Such like, an explorer. Ah, ah! Yeah, he is. He, he wants to explore every fucking inch. So the second I see him sit up, I'm like, fuck. He like he he will not go back down ever. Mm. You need. He needs. He won't either. put him. He won't like play around and then eventually lay down and pass no. himself out. No, even if he sits up, he, I don't even think he knows the action to lay back down. 
<laughs> it's like really? they only know they only spring he, open. He, like, it's like a reverse bear trap. If he's sitting, he'll like lean forward on his hands and then be like, "Well, where the fuck do I go from here?" And then that's it. And then he, he you can like, see him like kind of like bobbing around. Such but then, a personality because wow. he never because he never knows how to lay back down. He'll just start screaming. I'm like, "Oh fuck!" So Damn. he's like, "Yeah, this, this is kind of like getting to a problem now because he's getting so old and so old." And I don't know. You know, he's like, he doesn't know how to sleep himself. So yeah. that's going to be a, a project. But there's the thing. Somebody will be like, yes, that happens at this month. Yeah. Uh, at, right? a, at, at 13 months, this happens. Sleep regression. Bam. They can't do it. They're too busy. Yeah. They like to stand up. They're able to move themselves more. So like, there it is. That's the rule. It happens to every baby. Yeah. And the fact is, no. That's not it's our, actually our family doctor straight up said, you need to get him to sleep through the night. So like, <laughs> like so I, would, I know. I would, I would like that. No, no <laughs> shit, <laughs> doc. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Glad you got that degree there. Dumb. Yeah, how many years of school? <laughs> yeah. um, oh man, guys! Wow. Yeah, babies. Any last pieces of advice or well, because I imagine that there will be some new dads listening to this, or soon to be dads. So anything I'd, to leave people with? I'd like to uh, before we before we close off. I'd like to touch back on what we. Oh, oh I don't think and we're not closing off. She's got she's got plans. I can <laughs> tell. What I'd like to. <laughs> What I what, one thing that I I'd like to like jump back to a little bit is we talked briefly about our own parentage, oh, you right. know how how what our examples of what a parent was and what they did and everything and and, mm. and we didn't touch we didn't talk a lot about like how that's informed how we parent. oh yeah that's a good that's oh a good like how our yeah, parents yeah, yeah. raised us is that what you're saying or like how what the, like you? your dad gave you an example of what a dad does oh. yeah and, and and how has that impacted oh, how crazy. you act as a dad. Have you found that you've ended up emulating some things or have you gone like, this is some stuff dad did that I want to do differently Hmm. before you became a dad? Did you think I'm never going to be that kind of dad or I'm like, I'm never going to do that thing or I really want to do that thing that my dad always did. And then do you find now that you are a dad? Has that changed? That's a great Father's Day question. Damn. It's like dad's teaching dads because ultimately if we're doing a good job at like continuing our line, we're teaching our sons how to be dads eventually or giving them example of what a dad could be. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. So I definitely think, I I don't think there's much that my dad did that I was like hard. No, I'm never doing that. Like Mm. I can't really think of an example yeah. Of what he did that, like, as a kid, I was just like, I hated that. I mean, mm. was there anything? I that mean, maybe like, like spanking, I guess, because that was cool back in the, oh, the 80s. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. That was cool back in the 80s. I wouldn't 100%. do that. That, that was like I mean, parenting 101. Just <clears throat> hit your children. I, yeah, pretty much. And that's, so and that's not though. to blame anyone from that time, because no, at that not. time, that was fine. Yeah, yeah I got the wooden spoon. This is like more when, when like millennials count. are calling friends problematic. I was like, well, they're not going to change for you. It was made in the 90s. Yeah, like, that's yeah. your problem, <laughs> yeah. not theirs. It's not going to change yeah. just because you didn't like it. It, it. it happened in the 90s. But anyways, true. Um, definitely like my dad, like I said, roughhousing. He roughhoused the fuck out of me. Like he would tickle me to the point in tears. And maybe I hate it, but I kind of like it. Yeah, of course. Or maybe, it's like, yeah. or maybe it's like when you get shit on at work, so you have to shit on the guy below you to make yourself feel better. Right, now I'm pass just it on. tickle attacking Zach, so you're like, this is how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Dad. Oh, God, what have I done? <laughs> well, what have I become? I know. Well, it's funny. Zach's middle name is Derek, or one of them. So, right. so he is like my little version of my dad. Whoa. Aww. Weird. Okay, there's, some, anyway. there's some Freudian shit. <laughs> Damn. Um... Uh, also, me and my dad have vastly different interests. I mean, like, he's a hunter, fisher, outdoorsman, fuck video games. I am, like, a geek-ass computer video game. I still love hunting and fishing. But, yeah, there's room in your life for that because you that have an example. I plan on getting oh, okay. Zach into mm-hmm. for sure. Nice. I, I, feel, I feel just living in this house, he'll probably naturally get into, like, video games. He's surrounded he's by it. Yeah, yeah. How could he stuff. not? But, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll have to put in an effort. To, to get him in the outdoors and get him like fishing and hunting and taking him to the camp, take him outdoors, teaching him how to live in the woods and stuff like that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that for sure. Um, and my dad is always very, very big on like <clears throat> only surround yourself with people who better your life. Love like that. if if there's a toxic person in your life, just fucking you're done. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. That's great. Like, um, and that's why dad's such a happy go lucky guy for the most part <clears throat> because he knows we're all good people and yeah, like, he doesn't have anybody bringing problems into his life no and he has in the past and he's let them go and he's been better off for it so like <clears throat> yeah i think that's a great lesson yeah for sure can't think I, of any right now but you go ahead ben well i like like i said earlier like i have like so i have my blended family and I, my my folks my father and my mother split when i was i don't even i was one i think so i oh, don't wow. have any memory of them together i didn't have to grow up quick or anything my only 
understanding of a parent relationship is with a mom and a stepdad. Right. And, and, and so, like, I I see that. And like I said earlier, like, I have... So I've got my stepdad, who is an incredible man. He's, like... He is. He works so hard to take care of mom, and has done right from the beginning. Let's let's raise a, a drink to the stepdads of the world. To the fucking stepdads. Yeah, hell yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Whiskey and coffee and Bud Light Lime. I have a great stepdad as well. Dang <laughs> day. He is legit. And if you're listening, Happy Father's Day, Derek, Stephen, Hank, and Alistair. There's a lot of you. God damn. Four, Man. eight grandparents, people. Holy eight. Shit. I know. Yeah. Tons. Yeah. That's where um, we're at too. It's craziness. Yeah. They don't. They don't get enough credit on this day, so they should. A hundred percent. Yeah. And that's so. Like my stepdad, an absolutely amazing guy, and a hundred percent the when you picture a stepdad, you're picturing. Hey, Dad. You're hey, Bud. Want to go go kart? You're, you're picturing. <laughs> you're picturing. You're picturing my stepdad. <laughs> Aww. Peter's got like glasses, a mustache. <laughs> where's a where's a shirt? Uh, where's like a collared shirt under a big sweater? Something takes you like, to the arcade. Yeah, gets like, you ice cream. He's the nice. He's the nice guy. <laughs> he's like a great. He was an amazing stepdad, Aww. and he knew obviously like because when I was very very young. He and mom got married. Um, the I had just turned five. I think that. Whoa, what, that is so, early. Yeah. So they got. So they got. So that's married like your normal, basically. Yeah. yeah. Essentially, wow, like I yeah. said, like this is my my whole life is knowing this. Right. Of course. And so it's very interesting, and I think this will be true of a lot of people from our generation because the peak of divorce was mm. in the eighties. And was uh, it? Yep. Oh. The, like, I would the, think it's like now. No, Actually, no, this is they, the peak of not getting married. <laughs> it's a, yeah. well, it, it's. I mean, maybe that's a big factor, but yeah. like they, they say that like, oh, the marriage, like divorce rates are higher than they've ever been. But like, yes, divorce rates are higher than they've ever been between the ages of twenty two and twenty eight. Because anybody who gets married between those ages now generally is dumb and don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, and then yeah. They get divorced. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's the highest it's ever been. Divorce rates of everybody who gets married are like lower than they've been since like 86 or something like that. Huh. Um, Interesting. They, so it was like, the, the, I know that there are going to be a lot of people who are in the same position of me who have like either blended families with like two sets of parents or maybe yeah. one who never remarried or like two single parents, that kind of thing. So they're going to have very different examples of what, uh, what a parent does and what a dad is. And, um, I was, I had a lot of, uh, my mom has six sisters. It's another situation where I think my grandfather Damn. was trying to get, get a boy, that, boy, get that boy. Squeeze and they, that boy up. He was like, well, six. we, well, we've done it seven times. Uh, <laughs> Lucky number seven. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll quit while I'm ahead at, with seven girls. Uh, oh my God. But I had, like, I yeah. just had a very, that family, the side of my family is very, very close. And like, I had a lot of incredible women raising me in my, in my life. And I think that's really informed who I am as a parent. Uh, what I really find to be important. Plus, I had a, I had, so I had an incredible stepdad who was very much like, who understood the boundaries of what a relationship is there, and that like mom and I, mom was a single mom with me for a long time. So she it's made the rules. Hard to figure out too. She made all the rules for me, but up to that point. So after they got married, I don't think it ever needed to be a conversation. I think right. he just was like, when it comes to setting the boundaries, when it comes to um, discipline, disciplining exactly that that is mom's job because. That's she's she's been that. Oh, she's I, I was out. expecting you to say like I'm going to follow mom's rule, but I'm not going to change the rules, but I will enforce them. That's kind of where I thought. That's you were going well, with I, but I mean that's yeah, that's encompassed in that in my okay. In what I'm trying to say there as well is that like my stepdad Peter, he he was never the one to like make a rule, and that mom was like, oh, that's a rule now, right? That uh. like mom was the one who was like the boundaries and everything. There was a lot of ask your mother. Because, yeah. because it was best dad quote because NA. well and, and from his perspective too is like he's the stepdad he's like I'm yeah. not gonna make the rules your mom makes the rules and I am here to enforce that them. is definitely more a stepdaddy thing than, than like a 100% bio daddy thing so I had, a, I had a great example in that and but and a very different example between my my father and my stepdad this is my my father uh very much an outdoorsman really gets out there and everything and and yeah. so I learned like he like he has very strong work ethic and everything and, and but they were always they were always so busy and i never understood that until you become a dad and we talked a little bit about this earlier of like how to measure your time out into little increments and how to be able to give yourself time and that kind of thing like i never saw i've never saw either my father or my stepdad like sit in a lawn chair and put their feet up Right, like because yeah. there was always something to do. There's always a project that he's doing. There's always a lawn that me- needs mowing. There's always something to do. Very and correct. now I don't really I understand the meaning that. of the word relax. Well, I do, but 
miss I, it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know what really, and my definition of relaxing now is, is mowing the lawn. Shit. Yeah, exactly. Wow, yeah. It's weird. It, uh, it's not that it's relaxing, but it puts your mind at peace. Yeah. When you know you've done something productive. Mm-hmm. And that, so, so it's less so relaxing in a body type way and more so relaxing your brain yeah. yeah like relaxing your brain is so much more important now than relaxing your body i find because if you can on focus on if you can focus on one task that doesn't involve also keeping an eye on the like little person who's constantly trying to kill themselves yeah like, yeah then then yeah it's like yeah you, it's almost a zen focus on one task in the way that like a like when you're meditating you're focusing on just breathing or like, like- <laughs> i'm focusing on just mowing the lawn yeah. that is that's the reason why, like, constantly I'm trying to multitask things. Like I say, like, if I got free, t- free time, I need to be doing at least three things at once because it, my brain is so hyperactive. I can't go to sleep with the TV on. I can't yeah. shut it off uh, yeah, ever. That's right. I, 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 need that, it, yeah. I need it to be focused on something at all times. Like, even when I take the bus to work, usually, like, I'm on my phone, like, working on something like in the YouTube channel or, or anything yeah. like that and just, or, or getting caught up on work. So like I'll have less when I get there or something like that. Yeah. And that is what you need the break from like your brain, your, your brain just needs to fuck off. off. For a <laughs> so you had asked <laughs> what, like what's some like advice yeah. that Ooh. we would give to dads? Oh, just yeah. to be dads. Um, and I think that might be that like, we, we've already hit on a few like big pieces. We've already hit on a few things that are like dad rule. Number one, dad rule. Number two, so on and so forth. But that, yeah. like, I think, Again, there are no rules. There are no rules. Yeah. And that's rule number one. Yeah. Is that you find what works for you and your partner and your child. Yeah. And it's got to work for all three of you. Yeah. That's the thing. You can't, you can no longer view the world through your eyes. You have to view it through three people's sets of eyes. And that may or sound more. scary. <laughs> it may sound scary. It may sound like the kind of thing that like, wow, shit, I'm really going to have to change who I am about that. And the fact is you don't. It yeah. just becomes part of your life. You don't yeah. have to change who you are, but you do have to change what you do. Yeah. You do have to change what you do, but it's not, well, I guess my point is it's not a conscious choice that's a difficult one to make every day. No. Because you want to take care of your If you signed up for this, you kind of knew what you were getting into. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Like the whole dad life. I mean, you, I hope, for the love of God, I hope. If you didn't sign up for it (laughs) and it's an accident and shit, you're like, this is your life You're shit creek. I don't have any advice for you. (laughs) You may have, you may have to make a more conscious, you may have to consciously You will have to force this. You will have to force this. Yes. Because maybe you're not at a point in your life where you're ready for that or this is exactly what you want it to be doing. Uh So there, but the, but one way or another the people are going to give you advice and take every piece of advice with a grain of salt take it under advisement but don't go shit that's the rule now because somebody's going to tell you something different and it's going to piss you off yeah you know what i found too i i was fully fully expecting coming into parenting to get all the grandparents all the other parents to just pound me with just their fucking advice not a fucking peep. Oh, that's, yeah? that's good. None. That's good, man. That's Not good none, but like lucky. very, very minimal because they just trust me and Sondra to know what we're doing. Yeah. Because that's I nice. think they understand that every kid's different, every parent's different. As lo- And they see that Zach's happy, they're like, doing their job right. Like, if he's a happy baby, bam, good. You're good. I think a big part of that too is like, that's where like, um, I don't know if this is true for for your guys' parents, but my parents and Melanie's parents are became grandparents for the first time in a tangible mm. way now. Yeah, well, for ignoring my blended family. That's what I'm doing. Then yes, yeah. my 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 mom and my dad, this is their first bio grandchild as right. well. Okay. That's yes. what I'll call them. Fully yeah. biological. Um, and same with Sandra's parents too. Yes. Because Sandra's an only child. Right. So, so that's she, so, has, she has a, a step-siblings as well, but mm-hmm. for as far like biology-wise, yes, this is their first child for both my parents and Sandra's parents. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, that's that true for for my family units as yeah. well. And that like, like I'd said, my stepdad had adult children. They've gone on and had children, but they live other they live in other places in the world. Mm-hmm. So there's not that like you know weekly or monthly or even daily interaction with their grandchildren or whatever. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of cases they got to know their grandchildren or meet their grandchildren for the first time when they're like three years old and that kind of thing. This is the first time where it's like they get to go to the hospital right. yeah, and meet yeah. their grandchild for the first time yes. there. So their roles are changing as well. Like they're, 
they're shifting. So I, my parents are very respectful of our choices and everything yep. as well. They haven't been like, mm, there's not, not been a lot of like patronizing talk of like, oh, you're doing it that way. Passive yeah, no, I, yeah. I get none of that. And there awesome. hasn't been, uh, has there been, if there's even been any of that, it's been very, it's been minimal to the point that I can't remember. Yeah. An or or we, they're like, why are you doing it this way? We give a justification. Like, cool. Okay. Fine. Makes sense. Nice. And their role is changing as well from being like, oh, so I don't have to be responsible for making the decisions for the children. <laughs> yeah. I get to spoil the fuck out of them. Yeah, 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 the fun part. I get to give them the cool things. I get to give them the ice cream and spend the like fun time with them and make sure all our fun together, all oh our time God. together is fun. And then when they start to get fussy, you go, okay, here you go. Here's your dad and <laughs> the hardest part for me with the grandparents is coming up with different names for all of them because there's so fucking many. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So my mom is Dutch. So she's Oma. So that one was easy. Yeah. And uh, she just, oh my God, speaking of spoiling the kids, she just got them like this little tricycle. Or, or something like that. It's like a little bike he sits in. He can use the pedals or he cannot. Yeah. But on the back is like a raised up bar. Oh, like handlebars? Yeah. So I can control it. Oh, nice. So it's like I'm driving him around. So it's like I'm driving him around and he's in this little bike and he thinks he's driving the bike. And, yeah. he, and the handlebars move when I move them. So it's kind of like nice. driver's training type deal. Oh my gosh, Damn. that's awesome. Fucking awesome. That's so cool. So it's even yeah. teaching him like the muscle memory of like a turn this way means you move your arms yeah. like this. Yeah. That's yeah. so smart. Yeah, I dig wicked. it. Um, that's amazing. But yeah, as far as that kind of advice, well, it's, it, well, especially with blended families too, because then you're like, well, here's eight grand, great, like grandparents. Yeah, I know. Mel, no, Melanie's parents are that makes it harder to balance time too. Yeah, when you have eight fucking grandparents, that's uh, yeah, whew, well, especially so my so since my mom and me, mom and my father separated and then they each remarried. I, since I've been an adult, they don't have to interact with each other at all. They haven't had to interact with each other since I graduated high school, so they don't have any dealings with each. Other. No, there's not like animosity there. But they also haven't had to have this other person in their life yeah, for, yeah. for a long time. And suddenly they do again. Oh, yeah, that's right. right. Suddenly that they do again. And I'm seeing like a side of my mother and my father that I haven't seen before because now I'm an adult and now there's competition between them again. And if there was competition between <laughs> them when I was a kid, I never saw it. And they were excellent at making sure that there was that I never saw any animosity between <laughs> them, that I never saw any competition. Now you're an adult. Them. You can deal with it. Now I'm an adult <laughs> and I and they get to like they get to bitch to me they feel like they should they're allowed to bitch to me <laughs> about the other funny. parent and I'm like I don't want you've I never done this, this in my life I don't need this now. I thought I was out of this yeah oh that's right like, I thought I escaped just it just when I thought I was out they, they got me, me back, back in, in. <laughs> and so they, like, that's what it is so like we're getting married in a few, Melanie and I are getting married in a few weeks and it'll be the first time that they're all in the same room oh. since I graduated high school wow and I that's the like that's one of the parts that I'm like I don't give a fuck. It's our day. You guys figure it out. Like, holy I, you guys, you guys shit, that's your out. problem, not mine. This you want to be there, fine. Too. But I'm not like I'm not in you charge. You have of to making sure say that though. You yeah. literally have to say that because I had to say it to my parents too. I was yeah. just like, listen, if you guys have drama, I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't give a fuck about it. Yeah. You keep it out of my radar and yeah. off my plate. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is not my day. Is it. not going to be about like being didn't necessarily diplomat. work out that way. But being a diplomat between my like sets of parents for sure is not on my. Was there family drama in your wedding? Yeah, it was actually not between my parents. It was mostly with like my uncle. Ah. You know, he was being a douchebag, but yeah, whatever. Dang. That's another story. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Like, add advice. Yes. Okay. Advice. In summation, TLDR. TLDR. Uh, do it your way. Make yeah. time for yourself and your wife and your baby, um, and for overlap time between the two of you, the three. Of and you, don't whatever. be afraid to take like. Don't be afraid for those times to be like to be like, well, I don't have a full hour to give to myself, so I'm not going to. If you got 10 minutes to be able to sit quietly and have a coffee, take 10 minutes. Fuck yeah. Take if you got, time. like, take the time when you can take the time because you're not always going to have it. Also, open communication is key. If you bottle up feelings and resentment, it's going to explode. It, me and Sandra found that, like, if something is irking us or bugging us, you just, you just fucking say it. Yeah. Because ain't no one got time to read your mind. We're both so stressed out that we may not have time to pick up on these subtle clues. Use your words. We're both adults. Let's just deal with it. And, yeah. and we do. And it's great. Um, because yeah. we, in the past, we have just like let shit slide and then exploded. Yeah. And then we were like, okay. And, and that, it's not as important then. It's not as important then because it's just the two of you and you're like, it blows up and then you no, talk I'm, about I'm it. No, I'm saying since he it. was born. Oh, okay. It's just like just like issues with the house, like cleaning whatever Zach dealing. Sure. Like I've um, washed the dishes every night this week. So that's a, that's a lesson we've both learned and we've both adopted this new philosophy of if something's bothering me, I'm just going to fucking tell you. Just say it's true. And that's fine. Yeah. It's totally fine. No one's going to like shit on you for that. Um, yeah, yeah. And then we'll have a discussion and deal with it. Much better. Highly recommend over bottling it up and exploding. So 
But also, it's important, like I said... Don't blame each other, too, when you do Never that. keep score. So, like, I'm ever. feeling this way, or here's here's you know here's how I'm feeling. Not saying, like, you're doing this to me, yeah. or you're not doing enough. Like, the you're, way you're, you're, you're handling about. this is making me feel this way. That, that's, <laughs> right. that's a much more gentle massaging of uh, what you need to get across. But like I said, if you keep score... Um, yeah, If you keep good. score... here, Oh, perfect, perfect summation. If you keep score, there's always a loser. There it is. Oh, ding, ding. There it is. Oh. And it, Been slacking on the bell. Yeah, a little Kay. bit. We had a few. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I think that sums it up pretty nicely. Yeah. I mean, your, your kid's going to grow all the time. They're going to change all the time. And when you're a dad, even though it's 2018, you're probably still going to be the one who, who goes to work. You're probably not going to be the one who... It's not going to be like paternity leave and mom goes back to work and you're spending all the time with them. In it's most probably cases, just yeah. going to fall to that... It, it it will probably fall on that yeah. that like not to say that the traditional not exceptions to that but for the roles. majority I think it's yeah. probably and because, and so because we don't dad, have the booby milk it's true yeah so that's kind of the limiting dad, factor make sure on everything your make sure that you're soaking that time up when you can have it <laughs> soaking up the booby milk <laughs> make sure you're mopping up that tit juice I cannot I want Luke to be Skywalker pregnant. with the blue I just, titty milk I just want to <laughs> squirt it at people. <laughs> <laughs> my like my main thing like i think it's so cool you totally could and, and you know what it's a and like a good defensive response too like no too close too close <laughs> you're in my space you're my bubble i'm gonna shoot you with life have nurture. you guys ever tried it breast milk no yes. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? uh it's really sweet yeah i expected that it's just really sweet i don't know it wasn't like uh, wasn't it like wasn't terrible. Pour me off a big class. like hey, bartender. I'll have another pint of the uh, the white stuff. It was just a little. Hey bit. baby, we're out of uh, creamer for this coffee. I'm just like, I'm curious. Like, there's some. <laughs> I would she be squeezes so a little curious. bit and it like dribbles out, and you go like, oh, wait, wait, I'll try it. Whatever. That's amazing. High five, because oh man, I'm just I I would want to try my own breast milk. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, like if I'm making yeah. milk. I'd want to like, fucking try that. I mean, I don't want to try my own milk, so... Uh, <laughs> like, I'm not taking it in my coffee. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm a little... It is not, I'm, it's, I'm it's weirded different. out a little bit. It's different because, pe- like, <laughs> nobody's supposed to live on cum. <laughs> this is a great way to end the episode! <laughs> And yet it Listen, is, the, ben, and yet it is the the essence juice of, of life. life. Yeah. Speak for yourself, Ben. Okay, I can. <laughs> <live with it. laughs> uh, no, I actually really like it. But but the you know human beings do live on breast milk. Yeah, that's magic so, juice. A little bit, mm-hmm. so, magic yeah. liquid. Um, okay, dear God, guys. Do you have any this, other further questions? Final I thoughts? Think, I think that's fucking it. And. Happy goddamn Father's Day. Yay! Thank Happy you. Father's it's Day. It's tomorrow. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. At time this, of recording. No, forget. Oh, so is this, this your one. second Father's Day? Yes. And this is your first. It's Yeah, it's a, it's like my real first. So people keep telling me, he's like, happy first real Father's Day. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> what? What do you mean real <laughs> because first? Because we celebrated Mother's Day and Father's Day last year because we were pregnant at the pregnant. time. Oh, okay. So we did it. But this is the first one where there's actually a, like a person out and doing shit. That's a great way to end it. Do you have any Father's Day They must Day be plans? pro-lifers. Father's Day plans. <laughs> Here's the thing about Mother's Day and Father's Day that you might not realize. In cards and in commercials, it's uh, it's like, you know, Father's Day or Mother's Day is like the other parent and the kid showing up and climbing into bed and they're wrestling bed and everybody's <laughs> laughing and having a good time. Real Father's Day, real Mother's Day is, it like, Father's Day is I don't want to be a father. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. Like for Mother's Day, Saunders is like, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, right, Mother's I'll, Day uh, is you don't have to be a Mother's Day, I love and you it. give it to you give that day to them. So you guys are gonna be chilling out on your own tomorrow? Well, no, 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 no yeah. it's not gonna work out that way. <laughs> Sandra works all day, so I'm literally being a father day. Aww. Yeah. yeah, like mm. and there's so you're st- and you may get you know in lieu you may get a day a in day lieu. in lieu <laughs> <laughs> yeah like Father's I wish. Day in lieu yeah but but you know that's so for in terms of plans like uh, Melanie's planning some stuff it's also my birthday on this Wednesday hey. so she, I know she's she, she may be planning some more stuff around oh, like nice. today or tomorrow to celebrate that and Father's Day so there you go yeah absolutely and in terms of my own father I'm a dad now so they get a phone call. Right. That's all they're getting for fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. send them a picture of their grandson and that'll be their father's day Happy gift. Happy Father's Yeah, day. pretty much. Pictures pictures are the best. Yeah. Um yeah, I got a father's day gift. It was my new computer. Nice. nice. That's what I've been told. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh Melanie asked me what I wanted for Father's Day and I said booze. 
Oh, well, one of you I didn't know where take, you were going with that. One of you can take Booms. the whiskey. <laughs> one of you can take the whiskey. What? One of you can take the whiskey. I think Melanie's right. actually buying me scotch for, for Father's Day. Give him the whiskey. It's yeah. also his so, birthday. He wins. So, yeah. <laughs> whiskey is with one of you. I'll take it. Woo! Guys, Woo! that was great. Thank you so fucking much for coming on. Yeah, Thanks no for problems. letting us wrap about This was about great. Dance. I'm so happy I got this in. Like, this will come out technically after Father's Day, but it'll be the same week. So yeah, sure. It's right. still relevant. Yeah. I have something um, daddy related we can oh. uh, mention. What? Um, check out me, Ben, and another friend of ours, Q, in our Dream Daddy playthrough on Tarvold's Quest. Woo! Yes. Yes. Tarvel's it Quest is, TQ. It is a game about being a hot dad, dating hot dads, and both juggling parenting with um, put, some dads. putting the meat in the buns, if you yeah. know what I mean. Oh Basically every shit. dad's dream. Yeah. And we wanted Q to be here today, but he couldn't. But yes. Q, you're in our thoughts. And in our hearts. Shout out to Q. Yes. He's in our hearts. He's in our hearts. He's, in <laughs> our he's hearts. not dead, guys. Thoughts <laughs> and prayers. Thoughts <laughs> and prayers. No. All right, BQ. <laughs> No, just we will always remember you. <laughs> shout out to Q. Couldn't he couldn't quite make it, but we we tried. Yes, yeah, so thanks, go to buddy. YouTube.com slash Tarvold's Quest. Yeah, go check it check out. It out. Check and out thanks Dream for letting Daddy. me record in the TQ studios because this is like the third or oh my fourth God. episode of the TQ studio. The TQ studio. TQ TQ studio. I don't know. I still like the bud hole. The bud hole's good. Yes, the bud hole's fantastic. Well, guys, do the honors and ring. We gotta do it together. Ring that bell. Oh! <laughs> I hit the mic a lot. We did it. So much fun. <laughs> oh, that's great. Cool. Thank you guys. Happy right. Father's Day. Wait. Happy Father's Day.